a sacrifice seduced for the altar of your vanity. A jealous, hungry God craving praises of profanity. With bedroom dark and dine and a deep mouth stained with wine, it drinks. It's filled. It was your mother's, much your brother's, that agreed to feed you poison. This egregious lack of choice indeed seemed fit to join your voice in. With lies disguised as prizes of reason and wisdom, with briberies of finery to weaken any criticism. Can the fly invade the blossom that devours it? All right, uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, we are on session 106. Just a quick reminder of what's gone before. We're very late April of 90 BC. Uh, about a month ago, um, there was a horrible tragedy for Astartes. His uh, Astartes' sister was uh, killed by a werewolf right in front of him. She, in fact, sacrificed herself to save him. Um, and in this short amount of time, he has very swiftly begun to degenerate. To He's realized that without her quite actual fanatic devotion, um, he's sort of just drifting and uh, is having trouble holding to the principles um, as taught to him by his clan. Uh, we have picked up... We're on night three, or sorry, we're on night four of the uh, Florealia. Uh, the first couple of nights, um, Albana rented a ghoul, or rented a warrior from uh, a Sedite named Ihamus, and did quite well for himself, but did not win. Um, she endured the final lesson of her time spent among the uh, ferals. Uh, attempting to learn a little bit about the Road of the Beast, uh, as per direction from her mentor. Um, Androdimus, poor, poor Androdimus, has realized he is but a minor pawn in the game of uh, superior players in Rome. Um, and he was used quite badly uh, by the man he believed was his, a noble patron. And uh, it has turned out, in fact, that his patron was just... Just as sneaky and underhanded as uh, everyone had feared. Um, and we have picked up a new uh, member of the Coterie, uh, Katerina Flavia. Um, she prefers to go by her last name. Uh, for reasons yet unknown, um, it is, as we have said, night four. Uh, last night... Um, he endured, her, her sire endured a uh, ignoble end, um, destroyed, exposing his, his own um, weakness and cowardice uh, when confronted by a superior foe, and was in fact murdered in front of the entire vampiric community of Rome um, by a couple of angry bears uh, in a type of animal exhibition. Um, She was taken under the wing of your patron, Alexander, um, who has uh, proven to be quite enamored of her time spent in the theater and her new perspective. Uh, his chilled Gaius Marcellus um, is with you guys in your group haven in Rome, uh, and you have begun the night getting to know each other, uh, swapping stories and such. So that's where we're at as we start. Uh, anybody got anything they want to do this particular night? I believe we are also planning to help get Flavia introduced to the movies and shakers of Rome, yes? The ones that we know of, at least. 
yeah, it's a uh, long-term goal is to get her educated, uh, able to stand on her own two feet, but also to help keep her uh, protected. Um, obviously, Alexander wants his new investment um, to uh, be around for a long time as he wishes to enjoy her. Would it be possible for me to, uh, to invite uh, either to have uh, the invitation to Falzia or Messiah into our court haven? Um, your sire is quite busy. Um, but uh, Falzia would love to come talk because she has to talk to her, uh, to her own uh, student as well anyways. And I'll now proceed to send her invitation. She's going to uh, buy a few slaves uh, for them to enjoy during the night. Okay. Yeah, you uh, get the dregs of the last open slave markets. Um, they're not doing a, a bunch of business during the festival, but there are some open. And of course, thanks to the uh, civil wars and stuff coming in... Um, the slave market is thriving. So, you've gotten the dregs. A couple of old men. Um, old men, old women. Uh, taken in one war or another at some point. Probably from Hispania and shipped back overseas to uh, be sold. So, uh, there's, let's say, four of them. Uh, that are uh, bound inside the basement of your call haven. And uh, Falzia just walks in. Um, basically just blows past everyone trying to stop her, and she just comes in the door uh, with you guys, and she immediately um, sees the brand new uh, canine sitting there um, talking with you guys, walks up. Now, uh, Flavia, to put this in perspective for you, let me give you a mental... Uh, picture. Um, Fawzia is somewhat short. Um, she's average height for the time, but uh, in today's world, she's about five foot four. Um, very skinny. You can see underneath her. Um, she wears robes and stuff, and you, there's lots of pockets and pouches and stuff that you can see kind of dangling under her clothing as uh, as she comes in, and she has this wooden mask that's carved with a long nose. It looks uh, kind of like a stereotype uh, the Italian clown uh, face. Um, and as soon as she's in privacy, she takes this mask off and she hangs it uh, by a little rope and her eyes fixate immediately on your hair and her face is uh, pockmarked gray, um, there's little holes in it, uh, her eyes are filmed with a gray, grayish orange, milky, uh, almost like a cataract, but you can tell she sees just fine. Um, her clan is immediate and apparent as she looks like a, a corpse who's been rotting for about two or three months and is beginning to collapse in on itself. Uh, and she immediately walks up and doesn't say a fucking thing and just starts pawing at your hair. Uh, and she's just going, ooh, hey, listen, um, you know, there's something I'd really like to do. I want to grow my hair like this. And I was wondering if there's some way I could get you to, like, maybe sit down with me and we could figure out how to make my hair grow like this. And she starts, like, just, like, snap, 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 snap. Starts, like, jammering facts and stuff at you about hair growth and rate and... All that stuff like that. Um, I think Flavia would find it very hard to sit still in in her presence because she would remind her a little bit of La Viena, I think, and except an older version, I'm guessing. Um, 
it, at least by appearance alone. And she tried to keep up with everything that's being said to her, but wouldn't speak unless she was invited to answer yeah. a question. To be fair, once once um, Fazia gets going, it's hard to get a word in edgewise. Uh, she does... She gets on a tangent, and if you've ever seen a college professor begin talking about a subject, it's hard to get her to stop. Um, you guys feel free to interrupt her at any time, as uh, she's making your new Kodori member obviously squirm in her seat. Like, um, this fucking bitch is touching my hair. I didn't say she could touch my hair, but I don't feel comfortable telling her to stop. Somebody please help me. Help in our approach. Yeah. Place a hand on Falzi's hand and gently but firmly pull it away from Flavia's hair. Uh, yeah. You break her concentration. She's like, oh yeah, that's right. I came here to see you guys. Um, sorry, I got. To, you know how I get distracted like that. Um, completely has no fucking care about societal norms. Like, Labiana, you can at least like tell she cares about etiquette and will, you know, manners. Fazia doesn't give a shit. She's like, oh yeah, 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 right. So you, you, uh, you guys, you know, invited me over here. Um, hey, Labiana, I got to talk to you in a minute. Um, but you know, hey, what's going on? Well, first of all, I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of Kotori. See the. Close the relationship that we all shared, that we have assisted each other in the past. I believe that such a meeting be useful in assessing each other's ability to aid, continue aiding one another in the future, yes. This is Flavia Atoriado. She's not going to look for her, waiting for her to further introduce herself, to further... Um, to further try to impress upon uh, Fauzia, her new part of the coterie. Uh, so yeah, Fauzia looks over at uh, uh, Flavia and waits on Flavia to introduce herself. Flavia does so. She gives her full name and explains that she has been invited to join her new quote-unquote family as her sire is no longer living and she now has a, a new place to to call home she feels herself very very lucky that she was not left to fend for herself so gratitude in her voice would be very apparent and she's looking from one member of the coterie to another, kind of small smile in her features. She's she's very sincere as she says that. She further tells uh, the newcomer that she is a aspiring artist and would like to become a famous playwright one day and strut her art on stage as an actress and a dancer. Uh, she's like, okay, um, uh-huh, sure, art, yeah, um, yeah, love it, loads of it, sounds great, cool, whatever. Uh, but yeah, anyways, um, hey, listen, I really want to get every detail about, um, that death you asked me about, or, or you were talking about, because that, like, was the most interesting thing you just said. I think that statement would give Flavia pause because she doesn't really want to revisit the memory of seeing her sire being torn apart by bears. But she does relay the events of the night in as much detail as she can remember because in truth she was more focused on Alexander than anything else. And um, she doesn't seem to be, at least, 
a little bit sorry about what happened to her sire. That that much is evident. Uh, she speaks of him in derision, with derision and relief that he's gone, basically. Oh, she does mention that um, there was some talk she overheard while she was fixated on Alexander that her sire had broken traditions that were important to vampires and for that he was basically branded a traitor and died a what she considers a traitor's death and then she all silent yeah, so unless you guys stop her, um, Fawzia gets, like, right right up. She, she'll take a seat, and she'll sit kneecap to kneecap with you. And she's, like, leaning forward. And she's, and she's just staring at you, taking in every, intently, every detail. And she begins pumping you for details. So, okay. So, let's see. So you said the bears killed him. Um, I need you to walk me through this, moment by moment. Um, search your memory. And... I need you to tell me um, how many blows did he take, uh, and and she begins like questioning you minutely about when exactly he turned to ash, how much damage he took, what it looked like, um, his utterances. Like she wants the gory, it, it, the most minute freaking details, and it's creepy how fixated she is on this and. She just like locked her gaze with your her eyes with your eyes, and is uh, basically going to have to be told to stop bothering you, <laughs> um, because you started talking about it. So therefore, she takes that as a signal that it's okay. <laughs> and she's going to do that until she feels that she is good on information or until you guys are like, that's enough talk about that. Let's talk, let's talk about something else. I'm just going to lean forward a bit, making sure that she's within the peripheral vision of Fazia. What about your own studies? I understand that since you got Labiana as your apprentice, uh, she has been giving glimpses of what, uh, of the great marvels that you have been achieving. I find myself most curious about her, but she, she finds herself sometimes has issues describing more technical details. I imagine that you, more experienced in the matters of life and death, be able to describe them better. Why don't you regale us with your stories? Oh, well, you know, that stuff's not for the uninitiated. And uh, those who lack the sensibilities to appreciate the uh, intricacies of the study of uh, death and decay. Um, the last time we had this discussion, uh, we were in Thebes, if I remember correctly. And it's, uh, most of you proved unworthy. So are you sure you really want to talk about the gory, gory details? Thieves is a long time ago. We all changed a great deal. Well, good. Then I have a bargain for you. Because this is what I wanted to talk to Labiana about anyways. Um, we are soon to move quarters. And I find myself to be in need of more money than I can get um, and by my usual manners. Um, I need like 50 gold pieces. And that's a lot. Um, and it strikes me that now is the perfect time to go get it. So I will talk to you a little bit about my studies if you help me get 50 pieces of gold over the next two nights. How much 50 pieces would be? Um, in terms of temporary resources, resources four. I believe that can be arranged, yes.
well, good. Um, you guys first. And then it might take me a while to tell you about some of my studies. So, money first, knowledge second. As it currently stands, our knowledge is able to supply three dots of worth of debt. Uh, actually, no, two dots because she is brief. Okay. She's yeah. lower, yes. Well, the well here's the problem. Resources, just like all backgrounds and, and all abilities, it goes up exponentially, not linearly. Um, so... Uh, Two, you know, two or three people providing resources to is not enough to get you to fifty. It's an exponential increase, not a linear increase. So what you could provide with resources two um, is like five gold. We are going to have to arrange a way to get some quick money. I have not look so bit too familiar. Perhaps a few appearances could collect some cash, some money from coins from the locals, from the mortals. My allow us to achieve that. I arrange few wealthy patrons for to be entertained for the night. To be honest, I think Flavia was actually thinking the same thing, because in her mind, at least up until a few nights ago, she thought her wealthy patron was the wealthiest man in Rome. <laughs> She's very naive. But once she met Alexander and, and saw his power and wealth, obviously that faded a little bit. But she looks at uh, Malbina and says, uh, sure, I think that could be arranged. I, I haven't seen him for a while and I'm pretty sure he's he's missed seeing me, seeing me perform. I can do that, but it will take some time. Obviously, the performances would have to be staggered over a few nights time. And do we have that kind of time? How, how long do we have for this money to be put together? Well, I mean... <clears throat> my plan was to get it all in one night, but, uh, you know, if you guys want to take a week or two and get it together, that's fine with me. But, uh, you know, I just... We're going to be moving quarters to a larger, uh, larger area, and I need the money for uh, protection and uh, supplies and ritual components and... You know, just rolling the pockets of dead men and women is, isn't enough to pay for all that. Oh, out of character, was this the final night of the Flor Florealia? It's, uh, it's uh, night four. Uh, it's getting actually getting pretty late at night four. Um, so it's like one okay. or two o'clock in the morning. So you're not going to have time to do this tonight. No, I, I just had an idea yep. that uh, if we had enough time, we could pose as... Uh, bookies, or whatever they used to call them back then. <laughs> and charged a fee. And Pazier's like, I, I was just gonna, you know, break into a guy's house and rob him, you know, fucking rob him blind, but, you know, hey, you guys do you. Well, I mean, we could do that too. Might be a bit too. Mm. I understand that with the current uh, celebrations going on, a sudden robbery of someone that is rich enough to be worth the time robbing might attract a bit too much attention. Well, like I said, if you guys have a better idea, you know, hey, listen, I'm listening, you know. But, uh, 
that's that's the deal. You, you got to get me some money here in the next week or two, and then I will discuss uh, some some things with you guys. Let us see what Flavia and her patron can arrange with. I believe this is the best place to start. She's, she's actually thinking some more. The wheels are turning in her head and uh, she wonders out loud if say it's it's so late at night and, and people are out there probably partying having fun not just vampires but mortals too maybe there's a possibility of going down to the docks picking a merchant ship that has unloaded its goods earlier that day and pending that there's only one or two people guarding it we could maybe steal whatever money they hide in their coffers because surely they're not going to be walking around with all this money it's probably going to be hidden somewhere on the ship she remembers that her father always kept a little coffer on his merchant ship and so that gives her an idea of where the money was kept and how he kept it and what would we do if that merchant ship turns out to be a ship from another vampire and we stole from another of our kind a powerful old member of our kind um i would like you guys to roll your uh intelligence plus commerce Um, roll it that if you would like. Um, you don't have to make that roll, but difficulty six. I do not have commerce. Can I roll it at seven? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, okay, you guys can stop rolling. Astartes has this. Uh, Astartes, even as you suggest it, you realize that there's two problems with this. Most large cargoes are offloaded at Ostia, which is a boat ride of a couple of hours away from Rome, downstream. Um, and those uh, smaller river-sized merchant boats that come in actually come into Rome, um, if they have that much money on them, which if they would if it was like a, sp a certain type of spice or like had gems and stuff that they had sold off. Uh, it would be significantly guarded. Um, they're not just going to have one or two guys um, at the ship. So there's going to be... It's not going to be quite so easy as coming up and dominating people and to let, let me on board and give me the money off of this vessel. I relayed that information to the coterie members. So we're back at square one. Um, Chris, do I know the inheritance law of vampires in Rome? Because Flavia just became an orphan. Um, His um, might have money. The inheritance law is um, every person for themselves. If you if you can claim it, it's yours. So. What are we waiting for? Let's run over to her former sire's estate, see what we can get. It's a start. It's worth a shot. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Falzia looks at looks at uh, Flavia like, oh hey, that's a good idea. And and but even she's not that that callous to say, yeah, let's just go plunder your dead sire's shit. Flavia is actually cool with this. She hadn't even thought about any sort of inheritance law or anything that might be due to her being orphaned. So, hey, if she can get something off of this guy after having been his little slave slash pet 
for so many years. Let's do it. It's all for it. All right. <laughs> he was like, hell yeah, this is awesome. Let's go get it done. Um, she puts her mask and stuff back on. Um, and she's like, um, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and feed off one of those slaves that you brought, which is uh, very kind of you. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to need a couple of minutes to do something um, before we get going. Uh, so she heads off to the spare room where uh, most of Nicodemus' stuff was stored before it was lit on fire. Um, and she feeds off of one of the slaves, just like grabs the guy, drags him in there, bites down, um, feeds until he's very much near death, and he she pokes her head out. Hey, uh, Labiana, you want the rest of this? Um, uh, fine. It's probably a good idea to check where I am blood-wise. Whoops, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Let's see. Uh, yeah, why not? I'm feeling a bit peckish. Uh, get five. Oh, that fills me up, so... Very yep. nice. Salzia took five, you got five. Um, if anybody else would like to feed off of these slaves that uh, Albana had uh, bought during the, the evening, or actually, what she actually did was had some of the herd members go buy them. Um, do you have three people down there? that uh, uh, are going to die soon, no matter what. <laughs> I'm gonna take two then. I'm gonna take two. Flavia, Flavia, do you need to take some to fill up? I think she would want to be part of the group, so whether she needs it or not, she still wants to appear as part of them and she one of one. the cook <laughs> one yes she wants to fit in okay can't blame her for trying she wants to be one of the cool kids yes um so flavia when you go down and you feed one thing you noticed while you're down there is they have a prison pit um, dug in the basement of their cult of their haven and uh, none of you have fed enough on any one of the bodies to cause cause them to die yet so they're still alive and uh, once everybody's fed up uh, Flav or, uh, Fawzia is kind enough to grab the slaves throw them in the prison pit and then uh Put the, the, the trap door down and she puts something heavy on top of it so they can't get out. She's like, there, that'll keep them nice and safe for you guys. A very thoughtful measure. Thank you for your first, for your slow sight. Um, and if you look at the, the uh, spare room where she... The, her and Labiana fed on that guy to death. Um, the corpse is very rapidly decomposing. Um, she has obviously done something to it to make it um, decompose and be very easy to dispose of. I approach to study it. You can literally see it breaking down and decaying. I think I know what she did. <laughs> I'm going to be looking around. What the fuck just happened here? Completely bewildered. This is the first time I'm seeing it. Um, Claudia's just grossed yeah. out. She's, <laughs> she's got her face all twisted up like a prune, turning face away from it. Of course, Labiana uh, is looking at it fascinated, like, oh, I want to learn how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Fawzia just nods her head. She says, you will. We're going to get there. Yeah, it's like most will notice for the first time. Um, La Biena is probably is the closest she'll get to, you know, excited 
without actually looking excited. <laughs> You know, to learn this skill. So, are we going? Yeah, you guys uh, all get all your, your stuff together and you head out. Um, you notice Falzia and Labiana both put on these wo carved wooden masks. Now, to be fair, these do nothing to render them um you know unseen it's literally like people look at them they're like why the fuck are you wearing a mask but um it's not a they're not just walking around with this rotting appearance on the public street um don't you wish you had obfuscate <laughs> but no they do not <laughs> no um yeah so you guys head over to the villa um so, Flavia, as you come up, you notice the gate is guarded, as usual, um, to his haven uh, by two of his gate guards. Um, it's a nice area on the, uh, excuse me, on the Aventine Hill is where he, uh, is, is where he has his uh, villa. Um, pretty nice estate. It's got a, a mini garden in the back with uh, olive, or the olive trees. Um, he was pretty well to do, um, a little bit bigger. For those of you guys who remember Artemis's villa, um, it, this is actually bigger, more ostentatious, um, but actually less, less well guarded. Uh, you get the impression you could probably sneak in if you really wanted to. Uh, but so yes, there are a couple of guards, um, at the front, uh, and at the front door, and they're like, "Who who are these people? What what are they doing here? Where's uh, where's our master?" Um, she's explaining to them that uh, Marcus is is running late. He has been held up in long business talks with Alexander, and he will follow in in due course. But when that is, she is not aware, as he makes his own rules. And she has been sent back in the company of friends, who are also friends of Alexander, and so by extension, friends of, of her sire. <clears throat> and as she's got her dog with her, uh, presumably, walking with the rest of the coterie the, the dog appears to be very cool with them and very friendly and she's hoping that that sight alone and her words will convince the guards to let them on the premises i i don't know about friendly but but under your influence it is not attacking them but it, it's not happy with them for sure um so i set your character sheet up with a role for lying manipulation plus subterfuge and I'm going to go ahead and hit the roll button on that for you. Uh, lying to the guards. And while that is happening, I say in Phoenician, Albina, we must prepare to take them down if something happens. And I look at Labiana also. Yeah, Labiana will give a very, very, uh, very slight nod, which is noticeable by uh, Albina and a status. Um, I will say each of you are impressed by Flavia's uh, the way she spins this story, um, and the guards appear to buy off on it and uh, step aside and allow you in. in. Um, and they gave absolutely zero indication they understood anything you guys were saying that was not in Latin. While we are walking around, I want to see if we spot more guards and how many there are in the compound itself. Um, there's a couple of servants running around. Uh, you notice um, there's somebody. Uh, you can hear footsteps and such inside the villa. Um, it appears to be quite well made. 
Uh, it's nice and quiet inside. The walls appear to be quite thick, uh, judged by how much they're cutting down on the sound coming in from outside. Um, just from your first glance, it's a pretty standard layout. Um, the w decorations on the walls and stuff are uh, of somewhat middling quality. Um, enough to exp uh, show money. Uh, not so much as to show great taste. If, if that makes any sense to you. The uh, floor uh, where you guys come in is of a uh, polished marble. Um, it has a geometric pattern to it, um, which culminates in, in uh, a series of five-sided pentagrams uh, structures uh, in the middle. And there's some sort of floral um, mosaic or something uh, at the very center. Okay, so what is keeping us from keeping this villa for ourselves? A backup haven. We need to deal with the current servants. And the gods. Yes. Uh, I only spotted two guards as far as I know. Uh, intelligence plus law. Don't get a roll that very often here. Make a law roll. Finally, something that I can do. I am the law. <laughs> I am the law. Speaking of which, for the two people who actually watch this, um... The Dread version of Dread with Carl Urban is far superior, and if you have not seen it, you need to go watch it tonight. Oh, it is great. Can I reroll that? <laughs> um, so, Astartes, you're like, you've raised the question, why can't we just keep it? And then there's something in the back of your mind where you're like, you know... The Romans really like their law courts, and there's something that, that's that's in the back of your head um, that you realize you, you're forgetting something, and it's going to take you some time to think about it, and maybe if you relax a little bit and explore the place, it'll come to you. So, go ahead and make a re-roll, but this is, this is going to occur to you after like 20 or 30 minutes. And I'm going to spend a little power. Okay. Oh, uh, what a roll with will with willpower. Um, so, th as stated, the Romans love their courts and they love their proceedings. Um, you would have to find a way to make the court system buy off on you guys legally owning this and paying off on it. So it's not just a matter of um, physical occupation. What we could do is uh, is arrange studios, arrange uh, pets to own this for in our name. The problem is you don't know how he was affording this. Yes, there is also that. And he was um, clever enough, we'll say, to keep Flavia ignorant of that in order to uh, reinforce her dependence on him. As Flavia will be glad to, to tell you. So, you guys begin wondering through the villa. Um, Flavia giving you guys a guided tour, um, explaining... Uh, my sire said that he got this um, he got this tapestry here and he got this bust you know here um, I would like each of you to make a and uh, Flavia I will make for her as she has stepped away from the keyboard to make a um, perception plus awareness roll and your aspects will help if you have it turned on Ooh. Just. 
two. Oh boy. Uh, Aspects is just one difficulty lower, right? Correct. Yeah. That'd be D5 with all specs, yes? Yes. And she's using her all specs. Because she is paranoid um, about people jumping in on them. And in fact, she's paranoid that her sire might... Uh, reveal that he has been faking it this whole time and jump out and, of the shadows at you guys. So she's kind of jumpy. All right, um, Labiana, you sense it. Uh, Flavia senses it, but she doesn't know what she's sensing because, to her, this is normal. Um, but the uh, Labiana, as you're walking around, um, there are a couple of small figurines and um, carved figures that show uh, they radiate a presence. There's something about them that draws your attention. And when you gaze at it, um, there, it's just, it, it makes you feel possessive. You want it. Okay. And this is very much to you, this is very much not normal. Like, normal things don't do this. No. I mean, after kind of gazing at them for a bit, she might grab the attention of one or more of the other Coterie members, like Orbana, maybe Astartus, kind of point at them and go, I don't know, what do you guys make of them? Help Natash to look at what this figure that she's been pointed at. I approach closely and look at it. What is up about it? What do you feel? Be careful. I'm not entirely sure myself, but they don't feel natural if you catch my drift. Does the figure remind us of, enough of anything that she saw back in her uh, her time dealing with uh, Diabolists? Um, I would like you to make an intelligence plus academics roll. Can I make an occult okay. roll? Um, actually, I, this is limited to Labiana and to um, basically anybody who's been to Corinth. So that'd be La Biena and uh, Albina. Oh. So I was to say, um, would La Biena have any kind of idea what could potentially be... Yes, uh, you can roll it. it. Um, yep, since you're asking. Yeah, the two of you I'm both going, can roll. I'm going to be using our willpower. Okay. So, oh. so the intelligence occult? Yeah. Or perception occult. Alright, um, so Albina, you have a wound penalty applied, and I don't know why. Because I still have the aggravated damage oh. from the... Yes, that's correct, you do. Yes. Um, so that's an amazing roll. And now I would like you, Albina, to make an intelligence plus um, a cult roll. Labiana, you as well. Intelligence plus a cult. Oh, that was my intelligence plus a cult roll. Okay. Oh, awesome. Never mind. You succeeded spectacularly then. Uh, you, the, you guys are talking, and Flavia, you're you're explaining. Oh well, my sire got this at an auction, and uh, he was really proud of it. Says it's got such a history. Blah 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 blah. And um, Albina, you go. Um, your sire's a fucking liar. That's from Corinth. And uh, Labiana, you recall reading through the notes and letters left by Nicodemus, and. There's a letter that was passed down from his sire about the final confrontation uh, in Corinth at the end of the Second Punic War. Okay. And how this um, 
evil creature had said that he has led had left his influence on Corinthian relics and that they would destroy Rome for him. Yeah, as you recall, this yellow uh, snow nodding ahead. The uh, close to a uh, impression of rec recognition, um, an understanding about where she's seen them before. As such, we'll kind of go well, actually. I recall seeing something uh, which tells. Is it? No. Oh, in short, I'll be able to just relay what she remembers to the rest of the poetry. Um, we did not really understood what you said. Your mic was very static. Um, she relays that information to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, given that information, would I recognize that it's demon influence? It's demonic in our origin. Um, it's not. It's you can't tell what it's doing from here. You just know that there's something supernatural about it. You would need a significant amount of study. I have specialty in demonology. I, I understand that, but to understand what it's doing, you would need to study it for a long time. Okay. John, have your side ever uh, presented, brought someone to see the statue, someone specifically to see the statue? Perhaps ever discussed the statue with someone in particular? She isn't actually sure. Because a lot of the time she was kept to her quarters. So not always seen everybody that comes to the house. I'm going to try to do something particularly stupid here. Somebody better stop me if I misbehave. I'm going to touch the ground and use Auspex tree. Okay, this is a tiny figure. Um, it's about the size of your hand. Um, it's set up in a, on a little pedestal. Um, it's like a little bust, uh, intricate, well-carved, quite beautiful, actually. Um, What's the difficulty? Uh, your difficulty is going to be five. So you're going to actually touch it and use um, use a read object. Spirits touch, yeah. Yeah. Actually, before he does, uh, would Lubiana have any knowledge of whether or not anything bad might happen to a status if he touches it um it's it it is exerting a supernatural pull um it hasn't struck you blind looking at it um it's been set up in a prominent place in his home so and never been taken down so chances are it's relatively safe Spirits touch with six successes. At, at least on this immediate scale. Yes. Um, Astartus. Um, for the next week, you have gained a flaw and a, and a benefit. And okay. you don't necessarily know that you've gained either, but you have gained them. Um, you gain an automatic success to all seduction attempts. For the next week in character. However, you have also gained an addiction. Um, you have gained an addiction to uh, afflicting pain while feeding. And here's what Astartes sees. 
And in fact, he with so many successes, he in fact experiences this um, very deeply, as if he was there. It's an orgy. Uh, he catches a glimpse. Uh, he's on top of a large hill overlooking the city. He can see the city under the moonlight before the um, pleasures of the flesh pulls him back in. Uh, there are men and women there of uh, varying ages uh, performing various acts upon each other, um, utilizing various techniques and toys. And I don't think we'll need to go into too much more detail there. But um, these acts... Uh, are not just those of pleasure, they're of sensation. So think Cenobites from Hellraiser. Some of them involve um, cutting, uh, crushing, um, choking, punching, uh, acts of not just light pain, but we're talking like significant flesh-tearing um, acts. Uh, and everyone seems to be deeply into it. And uh, Astartes, you have taken a portion of this sensation and experience into yourself um, for the next week. Although, so you are going to find yourself more easily... It, it, seduction has always come naturally to you. It's uh, even more so now. And you're going to find yourself wanting to enact some of these um, acts that you saw, some of these um, things with knives and um, bone crushers, nut crushers, nut crackers, excuse me, although that's exactly what they were being used for. Um, things like that. Ouch. I relieve what I see. My face, I relieve my face to the coterie, and I put the bust back. Um, those of you guys, you all see on his face that this was a pleasurable experience for him. I've never seen a brush, noticed the expression on Ashtar's face and his description. Perhaps she may make a suitable gift for the prince. Mm. Yes, so... Um, as I've said, there are some servants running around, um, cleaning, straightening things up. Uh, they don't appear to be doing much, just looking busy. I, you guys have, have seen enough of this to know this, what they're doing is... Their master would be very upset with them if they were resting or sleeping, therefore they must look busy. Um, but nobody's bothered you. Uh, you have been left to uh, sit around the pool, uh, the fountain in the front, until um, such time as the master of the house comes back. And well, the two guards up front are the only guards we, we have seen here, right? So far. So they're, far. The, they're the only obvious guards. And I turn at Flavia. The servants that were working here, were they slaves or free people? As far as she's aware, they are slaves. So if we give them the freedom, tell them they can go. They can go, they will run away. So that's one problem that's that we have to worry about. Now they only have to worry about the guards. Um, so Flavia, um, a man comes out to, to, as you guys are discussing this, a man comes out to see you and you recognize him as uh, your sire's his, uh, his right hand, his uh, consigliere, um, his name is Matteo. Uh, so he comes back, and he's always treated Matteo better than he treats you, although Matteo is only a ghoul. Um, 
Mateo comes out and he claps his hands. And he says, it's a Katerina, a Katerina. What are you doing back? I've been sent back by the master to wait for him. He'll be along later. He has not told me of this. He sent me no word. And yeah, who are these? Can... Uh, these? These does... are my associates. And have you offered them refreshments? Have you washed their feet? Offered them a seat? I believe that is your job. And I use entrancement on him. Uh, roll it. Um, there is a facial change in his face. Um, he, uh, yes, he's a ghoul, but, uh, your wave of supernatural power just reaches out and, um, ensnares him. And he turns to look at you and he's just like, Oh, yes, whatever you say, friend, of course, uh, right this way, please sit down. And he, and he like starts snapping his fingers and he calls out a couple of names and he points at you guys and he's like, see to their needs, wash them, give them some slippers. Um, you and you, you fetch wine, uh, bread. And he looks at you guys, he says, bread, cheese, uh, meat, anything. We do not eat. I see. Wine it is then. You. You, you, and you. Wine. And uh, the servants leap to his command and begin running off. Somebody comes up to you. They offer you um, a seat on the on a couple of benches. And they begin to wash the mud and street gunk off of your feet. And offer you clean sandals to walk around the house in. Um... I ask him about the layout of the villa, how many guards, and stuff like that. Uh, and he gladly expresses to you how his master has uh, many wonderful trees in the garden. Uh, he has set up a lovely area for entertaining back there. Unfortunately, he cannot show you back there uh, due to his master's command, um, but... Uh, he's very much looking forward to being able to walk you through and uh, take you to his favorite tree and explain to you how during the days he likes to take naps back there. Um, uh, there are uh, several guards throughout to assure your complete safety in the home. Uh, there are usually two at the front. Um, there are three in the back, and they have a pair of men who walk the rooftops. I wonder, should the nature of these guys, are they normals, commons, or have they been enhanced? Have they had the taste of the master? Well, the master did not share those details with me, but I assure you that they are quite um, skilled at their job, um, and they will allow no harm to come to you while you are inside uh, and under his protection. Oh. I have no doubt. And I ask him if he knows how his master acquired these statues. If he knows about the origin. Oh, uh, of course. Uh, I won this particular auction for him personally. And he points to the, the one you guys were so interested in. Um, uh, it, it, I outbid a, a fairly insistent buyer um, from the south. Uh, he claimed that it uh, has some sort of curse to it. <laughs> um, but uh, we had it blessed by uh, the priestesses of Hephaestus, and they have assured me that it is washed clean of any um, baleful influence. Uh, <laughs> it is uh, it's a wonderful piece. It only cost me 25 gold. Um, this piece here, and he begins pointing at uh, some of the others, this is a war trophy 
that was taken from uh, a Carthaginian ship um, during the war uh, in the around 160. Um, and he, he actually uses the Roman date for that, obviously. Um, and he begins talking about some of the other stuff and, and how some of it was taken and how the master uh, told him about some war stories, which you guys were at Carthage and you know for a fact he was not there and um, that her sire is full of shit when he was talking about some of these war stories, how he got some of the stuff from Carthage itself. When his entrance uh, starts in telling the war stories, Alpina is going to place a hand on Flavio's shoulder to her side and whisper to her, Do you know if your sire kept a stash of valuables? A place where he would hit the more easily commercial goods? Well, Flavia knows that he's kept some unusual pieces, just like the one piece that you were looking at before. He is a, considered himself to be a great connoisseur of the arts, sculptures, um, paintings, frescoes, you name it. He, everything that struck his eyes, he liked to possess, and she's not sure that all of that he actually acquired is at this villa. In fact, he, he probably has other places that he stashed things away, but she was not being privy to being told exactly where all of it is, but he boasted about it to her okay. quite um, frequently. It is getting on. It is. You guys would estimate that you don't have much more time. You're either going to have to shelter here or do your business here quickly and get back to your havens. I approach Albina and whisper in her ear. Maybe you can convince this guy to let us take all these statues. We have to bring them to the prince. They cannot stay here. We can get some pretty good reward from the prince if we deliver them to him. No doubt. Yes. He seemed to be quite taken with you. But um, I meant maybe he needs a more hard approach. Of course. Alvin is going to proceed to approach the man. Uh, make sure that she got some eye contact with him. You are going to assist us in safely moving these statues and uh, these valuables. The valuables in the house. Okay. Well your dominate role is at difficulty three because of your merits. Um, however, he is going to get a willpower resist because of the blood bond. Uh, he can't beat that. Um, you're good. You're gold. He, he, he just kind of... Um, sure. Yeah, we can do that. Um... Don't really have any crates. Uh, starts looking around and he's like, um, mm, thinking. Yeah. And he starts yeah. going, he starts grabbing some people, some, some service. He goes, You wake them, and he starts saying, giving him commands. You wake some people up, and you wake some people up. Go get those crates of fruit out of the back and some straw and bring them up here. So yeah, so more and more servants are beginning to flood these halls, looking at your faces, um, seeing who you are, uh, looking at these strangers in their midst, and obeying the rather strange dictates of uh, uh, Mateo. And they begin to they put about three or four different size small crates, um, about the size of what you'd call a milk crate, uh, into the hall. I think at this point Flavia would be getting a little bit wary and 
hesitant about all the commotion that's going on that all these extra slaves coming in carrying things out you know packing things up might get the attention of the guards yeah all of you guys I... not on humanity are beginning to feel the pull of the day you're beginning to feel it it's you're getting lethargic you're getting tired you're starting to feel that urge i have to go get shelter quickly and in fact you look around and falzia has already dipped she's gone we have to move quickly now um everything is packed um you, you can get in these little crates and stuff you get the one small statue from corinth and you can grab a couple of other little pieces of pottery or you know decorative stuff in the crates but that's all you can fit that's all he brought but it's, it's like packed in the fruit in amongst the like the the mangoes and the fig or sorry the figs and the um and the grapes and, and the olives and stuff like that um if i may can flavia have two minutes to go down to her bedroom and get her jewelry He's literally kept it in, in one box. Yeah, Flavia, you've had the, the run of the... Since you came here, so... It's just everybody else was confined to the front. So, yeah. as, as they're doing that, you just kind of, like, back away. And you're like, obviously, they're all occupied with looting my... My sire's stuff here in the front. Um, and you run to your room, and you get your jewelry. Maybe a couple of important, like, um, gowns and stuff that you really just can't bear to leave behind. Um, but as you pass, you realize, you know, my sire's study and his private stuff is right there, and he's no longer around to punish me for doing this. You can go into his private area if you want. There's nobody around. Yeah, she would actually take a quick dip into his study because she remembers that, um, her sire had a couple of very valuable rings that he wore on um, important occasions. One of them was this big emerald and the other one a ruby. And she recalled specifically that when they went out that night that he was murdered, that he only wore one of the rings. So okay. she's thinking the other one might still be in there in his right. little box we're gonna roll a perception plus investigation check and you're using i have you with auspects on so we're gonna use auspects on that we'll set your sheet up for that real quick uh do 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 do, do. Loot, rolling looting And you, because you know your sire quite well, um, this is going to be difficulty five because you have auspects on. Ooh, that's a lot of successes for you. Five successes. Um, I tell you what, you are rolling like a champ tonight. Um, yeah, you you go in and you you start. You're like, oh, hey, wait a second, and you start um, going through his um, drawers and stuff, and you you start grabbing. The jewelry and things that are in his uh, uh, in his uh, locked drawers, and you go to pull on one drawer and it like gets stuck for a second, and it rattles, and you you pull it, and the bottom drops out of the dresser uh, drawer that you're in, and you realize there was a hidden um, spot under there, and you reach in, and we're gonna roll and see how much money you just pulled out. Uh, you grab 49 pieces of gold out of the bottom of this drawer. Her eyes just grow big at the sight of all the gold. So yeah, there's a, you just like take the drawer and you kind of like dump it into the uh, boxes that you're taking with you. The bags. Yeah. Yeah. 
And by this time, it is time to go. If you stay any longer, you're going to have to shelter here overnight. I give Flavia a yell. Come on, let's go. Your sire is waiting. Okay, um, she tries to grab all her stuff. I'm assuming she would be capable of carrying all of them. Oh, that yes, item. absolutely. Um, okay. And if not, it can be distributed amongst everyone to, to carry. However, I need you to make a conscience roll at uh, difficulty six. I think your humanity is diff seven. Yeah, you got one success. It's all you needed. Um, this is your inheritance. Uh, this isn't theft. You, you, this is your inheritance. This is rightfully yours. You're good to go. Okay, she regroups with the others and is ready to make it out, however we plan to do that. And she looks at everybody, wondering if they have a plan. Walk, walk uh, right out the front door. <laughs> yes. Barak while leading the way. Yep, after you, Flavia. But um, if they're going to ask me to stay with will, the master... No, I will tell my new boy toy to accompany us to the front door and make sure that we can leave him deliver this to... The sire that's never okay. coming back. Um, Astartes, do me a favor and describe Barrack Ball for Flavia. Barrack Ball is... He's an African. He's literally built like a tank. Fully armored. But right now his armor is covered under a rope. But what you do see, he has a really big-ass axe. A two-handed axe with him. Um, and he, for the record, he keeps that covered so that yeah. it doesn't draw undue attention. But when we are in the Cult Haven, it's uncovered, so you have seen it. And he's the type of guy that you will step back out of his way and not even, you're afraid to look him in the eye. He's built to intimidate people. Okay, she feels better now, having seen this guy. So, are we gonna go? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Um, you guys book it back to your haven. Um, Falzia is waiting for you there. She actually did not, did not have that much of a head start. Um, and she is quite happy with your haul. She, uh, takes the uh, the gold and uh, a couple pieces of jewelry and she's like yeah I can sell all this and um, we'll be good to go that's uh, as as much gold as I needed so your half of the bargains fulfilled um, tomorrow we will uh, I will discuss um, some things I found about anatomy excellent I look forward to seeing the result of your studies. Me too. Alright. Um, you guys all sleep soundly in the group haven. Um, Gaius Marcellus uh, as well. He gets up and um, he he uh, is gives uh, Flavia some a few talks, some etiquette lessons as you guys are waking up, preparing yourselves, getting refreshed. Um, everybody, of course, mark a blood point off of your character sheet, so you should be mostly, I think, at full minus one, unless you've spent one or two for disciplines. Um, and uh, Fazia, uh, who slept there overnight with you guys. Um, Basically gets up and she's like, okay, um, so I'm going to need to borrow one of your slaves and uh, one of those guys and just make sure I need them alive. Of course. Where would you like to, would you like to take him now or would you like to have him delivered somewhere? No, no, we'll, we'll do it right here. I think is the most uh, efficient setup. I have enough resistance to get down, uh, get down to the slave pit and pull one, and tries to pull one of them out. Okay, yeah, you have more than have the ability to do that. Um, you go down there and they're like begging you, please let us go, please. 
yeah, we'll, we'll actually work for you. We'll do whatever you want. Please don't hurt us. And you just, you know, it falls on deaf ears with you. You just pull up the one that you want. All right, come on. Um, Fawzia asks, uh, do you guys want us to do this on the main floor? Do you want to do it downstairs? Like, where do you want this lesson to take place? Guys would be better. Would not wish for the other mortals to take notice of this. Uh, this, this is going to be a noisy endeavor. Um, I don't know about noisy, but uh, I found that they people don't like watching it. Chris, can I use my first thought in Office Gate to create a zone of silence, but? Just keep the body on the edge of the zone so Falsia can speak, but the body can not make any sound. Um, well, Fal what Falsia is going to do, and uh, is she is uh, she's going to ask you to just blanket the room in silence, and um, I assume you, you're going to use either Hatship Sip's room or Albina's room. You guys, you guys pick. Well, or or Labiana's quarters. Yeah, they're all the, it's all the same to Fazia. She doesn't care. <laughs> I'll be I'm just like, eh, might as well just use my room. Okay. Um, you guys set up some candles and stuff down there, and uh, uh, conveniently, um, Labiana has uh, a hook dangling out of the top of her um, chambers for her own experiments. And the first thing you guys see is um, Fazia grabs these man's hands. Um, okay, and before I begin, Flavia, are you watching this? Unfortunately, yeah, she would. Okay, be. she's curious. It's going to get real disturbing. Um, the first thing you see is uh, Fazia grabs this guy's hands, picks his arms up like he's doing a jumping jack, you know, with his arms over his head. And he cla she clasps the man's hands together, and you see she squeezes, and it's like she's squeezing clay. And you see his flesh begin to bulge between her fingers as it begins to uh, merge. And this is happening in complete silence as the this weak old man begins to scream. And, like his tendons in his neck get like real tight, and his mouth pops open. And you can tell he's yelling at the top of his lungs, but no sound emerges whatsoever. Um, complete, complete silence. Not you could hear a pin drop, and um, when she lets go, the man's hands are physically fused together in one big ungainly lump. Um, and she grabs the guy, and, like picks him up off the ground, and uses his hands to hang him over the meat hook. So now he's dangling off the ground. But instead of like tying his wrist with rope and, and like doing it like that, she has fused his hands together and he's dangling off his hands. Vicissitude. Quite an interesting power. Um, the next thing she does is grab his chin, pull his mouth down, um, reaches in, grabs his tongue, and just twists it off. She throws the bloody lump over her shoulder. Um, and what she has done either. is she has, um, like, uh, like it, if you would reach into a piece of clay and just like pinch your fingers until it, 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 you know, pinches off and then she pulled it. So he's not bleeding, but she has sealed his tongue right there at the base. And then she does something to his throat and then she nods at a stardust to turn it off, to turn off, uh, obfusc to turn off the obfuscate silence. And I do so. Um, and all you hear is this man going that, that's as loud as it gets. And he's, he's weakly trying to kick his feet, but uh, uh, Fawzia is just like ignoring him. She's, and she starts going, okay, so we're going to talk about breathing today and how easy it is to suffocate a mortal. Alright? Um, so Let's begin. She tears his clothes off. Um, 
Katarina, I need you to make a conscience roll um, at difficulty uh, 9. So is that where I set the number to 9? Yes. Okay. Uh, you failed. You rolled it a diff six, but that's okay. So here's the deal: you can you can choose to lose a point of humanity or a point of conscience, um, or you feel compelled to intervene and stop this from happening. This is plain and simple torture, and uh, this this is uh, quite frankly hideous to watch. I think she would opt for option number three. She would start screaming and asking for it to end, to end the man's pain and, and suffering and just kill him outright. Falzia just looks at you with a very quizzical expression on her face. Why? All of a sudden, Labian is having flashbacks to her first interactions with Falzia. <laughs> because he is an innocent man, he doesn't deserve to suffer in this way. Why does that matter? At this point, Labian will turn to uh, Flavia. Well, if he's not suffering, we won't learn anything. Child, your compassion for these beings is a weakness that's going to drag you down. Best for you to shed it now, than to have it drag you, than to have it end your eternity sooner than what it needs to be. Well, he disagrees and basically says that she is unwilling to be part to any of this is it's going to continue then she would just rather take her leave and there's more than one way to learn there's got to be more ways than torturing an old man to learn something for quote unquote science and oh but, but, at that but, believe me we've tried and that reminds me um astartus i feel a pain a little bit as pang of conscious, guilty conscious, after hearing what Flavia just said. What do I have to roll? Um, it's either uh, conscious or conviction at difficulty uh, three for you. Because this isn't technically against the code, but it's somewhat against the code. You're, you're it, letting, against... obviously, monsters live here. <laughs> it's not against the latter, but it's against the spirit. Yeah. He's, he's letting monsters live. Um, Alright, so... Flavia, you are like, fuck you guys, I'm out of this. <laughs> um, I will leave it, Flavia. Alright, so the two of you guys retreat to uh, upstairs. Um, where you will not be subjected to this... Uh, travesty. In your as uh, you see it, and um, Falzia uh, begins to talk about um, the what she has learned and uh, regarding the function of the, uh, the ribs and how uh, screwing around with the ribs can lead to slow suffocation and torture of uh, of a human. Um, and she spends several hours going over, and she what she does is she um, undresses the skin of this man. So she uses the her arts, and you can tell she's not dulling the pain. She, she doesn't give a fuck about the pain. Um, she's doing just enough to keep him conscious, and uses her arts to take the skin off, exposing the muscle structure, and um, starts going over... Uh, how she has found about um, where where and how you can break so many ribs and how um, it can be you can break them too much and it can puncture a lung and 
She, so she begins talking about uh, anatomy issues here. All right, uh, she is going to make a uh, a charisma plus uh, medicine roll to see oh, if you have the possibility of gaining experience points in medicine. Unfortunately, her charisma is quite shit, but her medicine is quite high. Obviously, uh, you know, Labina does her usual, you know, scribbling. Right. Um, yeah, so scribbling down Labina, as as you can. are. <laughs> um, her terminology gets quite dense quite quickly. Um, Albina, you're doing your best to follow, but it's this is Fazia's fault. Um, she is getting so. She, uh, uh, you've met, talked to her many times by now. And she gets very animated, and she starts tripping over her own tongue as she is talking about, um, okay, so if you pop this rib and this rib and this rib, and it'll impinge this nerve here. And you see this white tissue? That's a nerve, okay? So look, that causes pain, and she's, like, yanking on it. Um, so, and you can do this and this and this, and look, so if you bend these ribs back, all right, look, you see it, and, and she, like, starts getting talking faster and faster and faster and faster, and you're trying to keep up with her, um, but you can't. <laughs> And that's not yeah, your fault. Say, that's her fault. I was going to say, at some point, would um, Labian have the opportunity to intervene and go, Felsia, slow down. Oh, she starts uh, rubbing her forehead, getting a headache for perhaps the first time she, 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 she died. Alright, so I'm going to roll this for her again one more time at difficulty 8. Labian is like, can you repeat that? Ah, much better. <laughs> All right, so you guys roll your um, roll your flat intelligence. Okay. Okay, uh, Albina, if you have a medicine rating of less than four, you gain an experience point towards medicine. I bet I had zero, so. <laughs> Uh, Labiana, same thing. If you have an ex if you have a rating of medicine rating of less than four, you have gained an experience point towards medicine. As she spends all night going over this. Cool. I only have two. And she does, in fact, allow you guys to get your hands dirty towards the end of the night, um, poking or prodding at his other side. Um, and by the end of the night, um, with about three hours left until dawn, he expires. He dies. This is most informative, Fazia. I am sorry that our most recent member did not appreciate the gift that you offered to us. She just shrugs. Ah, youth. She'll learn. If not, she'll die. Abna nods. Indeed. <laughs> right, so while they're doing that, Astartes and... Um, uh, Flavia, you guys have retreated upstairs. Uh, you're resting on the benches, looking at the arrangement of flowers and plants. Um, you notice there's an urn um, labeled in Latin with a, uh, with a plant in it. Um, the plant has long since died, um, and it is labeled uh, the Garden of Lilith, um, Carthage. Oh no! Yeah. Uh, I'd actually forgotten about that. <laughs> yes, everybody did. <laughs> That's why I died. Oops. I I mean I might have remembered, but uh. Yeah. You know. Well, no, you I, no Hatchet said definitely would have remembered, <laughs> but without her there to, to to be like, hey, you guys need to you know take care of this plant. Yeah, it died. Um. We were two roommates ever. <laughs> um, so you guys have retreated upstairs to uh, um, leave the uh, these monsters to their own lessons, and um, notably, um, the child of Alexander Gaius uh, Marcellus is also upstairs because uh, that's not his bag either. Um, 
So you guys sit around having a conversation. You know, what do you guys want to talk about? First of all, I thank Flavia for reminding me of what I'm supposed to believe in. And then I start questioning her about her past, getting to know her a little bit more. But before that, I want to go check the plant because the name Lilith sounds intriguing to me. So I'll approach the urn and the plant, see if I can use spirit touch on it and if I can gather any information out of it. All right. Um, you touch the urn or the plant? The plant first. All right. Your difficulty is eight because it's been a long time. Nice. Two successes. Let me look that one up. Auspex, auspex, auspex. So you have two pieces of basic information that come through. Um, what are you trying to find out? What are you looking for? The origin of the plant. And why is it tied actually to Lilith? Um, what you have, what you get from the uh, spirit's touch, is that um, the plant uh, came from a, a, guard, a garden of spiritual significance, and um, that it did in fact come from across the ocean. That is, uh, you did not get enough successes to uh, to learn more than that. But it is not native or local to Rome. You know that for a fact, and you know it came from a garden that was held to be spiritually significant. Okay. I have to remember to ask Labiana or Avina about it in the future. Then I go to Flavia, and I ask her about her past. Who is she? I want to get to know her a little bit better. Well, Flavia, this man is... This teenage-looking boy has come to you and, and begun asking you some personal questions. Um, how do you respond? Um, well, she tells him the truth. She basically touches on the fact that she was born to uh, a couple of freed citizens of Rome and that her father was a a merchant marine. She, he had his own little ship that he did business on and her mother um, usually stayed at home and looked after the household and taught her how to read and write because she was taught how to read and write by her husband who felt that it was important because it, it gave them a degree of independence that other people who didn't know how to do this did not have and she was a tomboy at a young age spent a lot of her childhood running around with the children of the neighborhood, climbing trees, breaking bones, that sort of stuff, and didn't really think about behaving like a girl until she reached her teenage years. And at that point, she decided she would like to be an actress. There were a couple of people in the neighborhood that uh, have watched her talk to herself and she was actually pretending to be acting out some lines um, and she didn't think anybody was watching her and they thought that she was quite good at it so they mentioned it to her parents and her father didn't think much of it 
at the time he thought that it was kind of a frivolous thing for a, for his daughter to be doing that because it was mostly something that slaves did at the time and he wanted better for his daughter but she would have none of it so she started sneaking away and tried to watch people at the theater and when they were practicing to see if she could learn something from them and she also picked up the learning of the flute there was actually one lady that she came across that taught her the basics of how to play the flute and the rest i guess she was just trying to experiment with whenever she had the chance and then of course there came a time where they were holding auditions for the choir and they were looking for young people to join in with strong voices and she made the audition and that's how she sort of became involved in the life of the theater in Rome. It wasn't anything big and her parents disapproved of it, but she loved it and she spent every free moment doing that. She assumes that it was a while that somebody had been watching her. She's always felt like when she was on the stage and whether she was practicing or performing, there was always this feeling that there was a gaze lingering on her. And it later turned out to be her sire, Marcus, that he has had an eye on her for some time. And one night when she was walking home from a performance she was grabbed by him in a dark alley and embraced she doesn't want to talk about the details of the embrace uh, it's visible it's obvious because her voice starts to tremble a little bit she doesn't have very good memories of that night and in fact if I don't know if our vampires capable of crying. They are. It's just tears of blood. Okay, then you would see a tear of blood. Just a single tear go down her cheek. And then she stops. While you are telling your story, you will see a star's face getting sadder and sadder. Just a little bit of tear drops from his eyes. He cleans it up. And thank you for your story. And you, we have a lot more in common than you think. I'm also a child from Traveling Merchant. And he will actually take his flute out because he's always carrying his flute with him. And the time for sadness has passed. Let's celebrate, because tonight we have scored something big for our ally. And he starts playing the flute. She just kind of looks at him strangely and says, The ally? Do, do you mean that woman over there that was tearing apart the old man? Sometimes you need to... Uh, to be ally of that old woman to get far in this life. So you're gonna have to do some things that you're not proud of, but it's the only way to advance in this life. After a century, it will you will understand what I'm telling you. If you say so. She doesn't appear convinced. Time will tell, my dear. Time will tell. She just shuts up and lets the music resume. And I try to start a party upstairs with the cult members and stuff like that. Uh, for the most part, they are they are pretty much in bed. Um, ah. Yeah. It's just a solo performance tonight. Yeah. Then. Um. All right. I think that's a good time to take a break. Let's take ten and uh, come on back. Okay, and we're back. Um, we are 
going to now skip forward a couple of months uh, in uh, time. Uh, just a thing. One day, uh, FLZF finishes her presentation. Would Alba be able to ask her if she'd be willing to cheat the uh, trade the secrets of the vicissitude? Um, unfortunately, Fozia is not willing to share that. All right. Uh, time passes in Rome. Um, Flavia, uh, Gaius Marcellus takes charge of your education. He teaches you how to hunt on your own um, in situations where you are not able to access your herd or your fame. Uh, he has begun to give you some self-defense lessons, call it. Um, a little bit more of how to fight, how to punch, how to uh, how to tackle, stuff like that, so you can run away. Um, but you have also, during this time, you spend more time with Alexander. He questions you deeply, your feelings on feelings in general. What is love? How do you recognize it? All the types. He goes over all the Greek types, what Greeks thought of love. Um... He uh, keeps returning to this theme over and over and over about how do you recognize um, what a human can feel. Uh, outside of Rome, the uh, war continues. Uh, you do, of course, receive news. Uh, from runners. Uh, Rome in the north is holding its own, barely. Uh, but in the south and east, they are suffering. They are not They are not doing well. Victory seems to be sleeping, uh, slipping from them. In the north, the war is run by consul uh, Publius Rutulius Lupus, with help from the special envoy Gaius Marius. Um, Gaius Marius is the single most famous general in Rome. Um, he is responsible for transforming how the armies are made and maintained. And uh, he is seen as an incredible uh, military commander. Um, in the uh, south, uh, Julius Caesar, who is the uncle of the Julius Caesar, um, and uh, Lucius Cornelius Sulla, uh, are directing the course of the war. And Sulla um, was the protege of Marius, although at the moment they do not get along uh, in any way, shape, or form. Um, rumor has it that in the south, the independent forces are scalping any Roman supporters that they conquer or come across. Uh, and they are imprisoning the families of any government officials until they starve to death. So this is a war of brutality. Uh, in July, the northern consul Rutilius is ambushed and killed in battle. Uh, Gaius Marius is given command of his armies, and in August he routs the rebels from the north. Uh, Sulla comes up to help him, and in a joint attack, they launch an attack that defeats the strongest army of the northern rebels, um, which is the tribe of the Marsai. Uh, it's not known for certain, but there are a few prophets in Rome declaring that this will be the high point of the campaign and that for the Marseille are on the verge of defeat. So there are many prophets in Rome that are declaring that on the streets. For now, the northern end of Italy is under much better control than central and south. Uh, and I have to type something out, so if you will give me a moment... All right, so towards the end of August now, 90 BC, you guys um, receive a message. Uh, it is from Alexander, and he you need to report to the Temple of Jupiter on the Capitoline Hill as soon as possible. 
and there is some urgency to this. So, August, Rome, hot, moist, humid, insects everywhere, mosquitoes, the typical outbreak of um, the usual plague affecting the streets. Um, the violence in Rome is subsiding a little bit. So the streets are a little bit safer than they had been uh, in, in the recent past. So, me and Barry Pal leaves and goes to the meeting with Alexander. All right. Um, I need everybody, as you are leaving, to make a roll. Uh, D100. Um, you want to get over 30. Um, Ouch. Well, I assume Albina and La Biena are traveling together, so let's average the two of those and declare that you made it safely. Um, Androdimus, you are also invited cordially. Um, by Alexander, not... Yes, by Alexander. Okay. He'll go if it's Alexander... If it was uh, Valeronius or whatever, he would have, he would have just been like, ah, okay. oh, how nice of him. Anyway, on with my business. Yes. Um, I will go ahead and make a roll for Flavia. So I'm going to type in forward slash roll D100. And Flavia, you um, are oh, unharassed. Alas, Androdimus at a 29. <laughs> uh, no, no luck for him lately. Um, you are headed there. Uh, I assume you're on your horse. Are you on your horse or not? That's yeah, on horse. Okay, so you're on your horse, making your way through the streets at night. And you hear a couple of voices. Please, please, alms, please, spare money for us. We're so hungry. <laughs> They're obviously sick. And there's three or four pairs of hands pawing at you as you try to ride through the crowds. Um, I try to count out a few coins from my purse and, uh, and like, uh, drop the bag to them. Okay. Um, make a, uh, we're gonna say charisma plus empathy roll. Difficulty six. Just make. Let me just make sure that I have still that my that I don't have any wound penalties because that was a recurring issue last last week last time. There we go. Three successes. Yes, you um, definitely put off the vibe of. Um, I'm sorry, guys. This is all I got. Uh, here you go. You know, you wish them well. And they seem to accept the uh, offering and leave you alone. Uh, be very glad you succeeded there. Otherwise, they were about to rip you off your horse. <laughs> so, um, yes, you successfully um, fend them off with charm and grace. Um, and they go on their way. Uh, unfortunately, you did have to spend quite a bit of your uh, liquid re uh, money to do that. Um, so you guys all show up to the temper, uh, Temple of Jupiter on the Capitoline Hill is one of the most prominent temples in Rome. Um, it is also claimed as the private domain uh, of uh, Princeps Titus Ventris Camillus. It is um, essentially from the outside a fortress. Uh, 
there are several Romans who have holed up in here and used it as a fortress over the course of history. Uh, so you guys come in. Um, you are kept waiting. Uh, for all the urgency of the uh, message, you are kept waiting. Uh, eventually you are, after a couple of hours, shown in to the room, to the space that you see before you, and uh, Princeps Camillus comes in with his uh, I don't know why I suddenly have had a brain fart um, with his sheriff that's not the term I'm looking for but it's his sheriff and uh, uh, Legatus Urbanus that's the word I was looking for um, and uh, in the darkness in the back uh, Albina, Andronimus, uh, Labiena, and Astartes, you see a figure that you have met before several times. It is the figure of Decius, the Ventru, who was at one point part of your coterie and no longer is. He is uh, sort of hanging in the back, in the shadows. Um... He comes in, and Camillus comes in, and he says, uh, and there's, they're dragging a third person. There's one other canine uh, with them, uh, a stranger, someone you've never met before. He's got long um, brown hair. His face is kind of sallow, get yellowish, um, kind of skinny, tall. And uh, Camillus comes in, and he says, uh, well, it's it's very sad that so few of you come to visit, except under such circumstances. Um, my scourge, and he points a thumb towards Decius, has uh, found and brought to me a new visitor to my city. Uh, before I castigate him for his careless violation of the domain of another, he has a message to pass on. And uh, this strange canine uh, straightens his clothes a little bit, turns to Labiena, uh, Bows to, falls to one knee and hands over a message to you. So, Labiana, if you scroll to the section labeled Handouts under the journal and open that up, and there's a thing that says Labiana Handouts, and underneath that is a letter to you, which you can read. I uh, wondered what this was about. <laughs> Alright, and for everybody else, I'm going to find the person presenting him the letter so you can see and I'll show him to you. I think. Ah, there we go. Come on, roll 20. That's what the, the visitor looks like. We should do it. Yes. She mentioned, none of you have ever seen him before in your unlives. He's a total stranger to all of you. Would we be able to say where he's from, with, uh, based on the way that he looks and the way he's dressed? Um, he definitely, he is not Latin, but he is uh, looks to be of some sort of uh, peninsula descent. So, from the peninsula of Italy somewhere, but definitely not Latin. He doesn't have the right features to be of... Uh, Aquiline features is what you hear people call it. That's that's the Latin features. He doesn't have that. But we talking from the north. So, have you read it, Labiana? You had a chance. Uh, I have. I have. Okay. How do you respond? Or what do you do? Uh, obviously, um, uh, if Labiana had, um, uh, a question of humanity left in her, she probably would have been a little surprised. But, uh, once she's read it, she'll look up 
She'll look back up at uh, Uchit U U yeah, Uchitore. Uh, so, who gave this to you? My sire and yours. And his voice, is, his voice is deferential. Um, he recognizes you as his elder sister, and um, you are more powerful than he, and he recognizes that, and you are more favored than he. Well... I guess I would would uh, have you. Uh, well, suppose I must take a night to prepare and uh, I must travel to see him to see what this is all about. It would appear I must stay here and accept my punishment, uh, as is right and fitting. Uh, if there's anything I can do for you before you leave, uh, please let me know. Uh, I can. I will tell you everything I can. Uh, but uh, I have broken a rule and must be punished for it. Oh, La Biena, uh, at that, uh, doesn't really have much to yeah, say in that regard. Yeah, that's that's just the walls. But, that's uh, the way it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you have told me everything. Uh, well, I don't believe there's much more to tell in this regard. So I do, uh, thank you for passing on this message. Uh, if you. Yeah, if you didn't have to be punished, I might have um, asked you to send word or try and get word to my sire, back to our sire, that I will get to him as soon as possible. Yeah, he uh, bows his head in acknowledgement of your uh, of your words, and. Um, Obviously, the rest, ever, all of your coterie is uh, standing around looking at you like, what the fuck's going on? Of course, you know, after she's finished speaking to Uchitore, she will turn around to the others, noticing that they're kind of just looking at her. She'll look down at the letter and then back up at the coterie and go, ah, well... It seems my sire, in fact, is in need of my services. Has something occurred to your sire? Uh, so it would seem. Uh, it, they appear to have a bit of a rebel problem up there. Where exactly is up there? Character, I'm just rereading the letter again. Actually, out of character, where is Padua in terms of ah, Rome? Um, it's a real city. It is in the northeast corner um, of Italy, um, in the foothills of the Alps. It's uh, somewhat near Venice. Okay, so I'm guessing it's further up than uh, Etruria? Yes. It is to the north, um, northeast uh, of Etruria. It's not on the coast, um, but it's pr decently close to the coastline. Uh, you guys can, in fact, look it up on Google Maps. It's a real city, and it still exists. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah. 
So, Lobian will do best to kind of say roughly how far the place is. Um, that would be an intelligence plus survival check for you. Um, if you ask, uh, you of course can ask Usatori, uh, what he did to get here. I mean, I guess she'll see what she can remember, like, if she knows anything first, and then, you know. This one. I think my brain's failed me again. What was the roll again? Sorry. Um, intelligence plus survival. Survival, that's the one. Yep. Um, you guys notice in the background, having being very quiet, um, is uh, Gaius Marcellus, um, the child of Alexander. Um, he has also shown up with you guys, and he just has he's just hanging out in the background, not really saying much. Um, so Labiana with two successes. Um, there's two viable routes. Um, you could go north and then cut um, across. That's the longer route. Um, you could go straight across, which you go east and then go north. That's the shorter route. But given the news of the war, that puts you in significant trouble, danger of running across uh, armies and fighting. You're basically traveling through very, very hostile territory if you do that. At this point, though, Lobian will take the opportunity to say to the Coterie, now, obviously, for my part, uh, I do intend to travel up there um, fairly soon, in fact. Possibly then as soon as the next night. Now, you guys do not have to accompany me if you do not wish. I'm more than prepared to go this alone. Nonsense. But it is up to you. Nonsense. You know that you have had to have us apart in this matter. And besides, what's the funnest thing in Rome? Of course. But I felt I should ask anyway. Um, hey, well. yep. So, yep. Uh, Gaius Marcellus approaches you and he says, uh, is uh, many pardons, um, uh, my father of the fatherlands. Uh, and he turns to the rest of the group and he says, um, If you are going, and uh, by extension taking Flovia, then uh, I am bound by honor and command to accompany you. Of course, you are more than welcome. Um, would you like my advice? No. That would be appreciated. Uh, he looks and he goes, uh, uh, Dormina Flavia, uh, I would recommend a shopping trip. You will need some traveling clothes, leather, um, some oiled fabric to keep the weather off. Um, I would suggest we travel north um, to the foothills of the Alps and perhaps into the mountains themselves and then turn east. That would put us under more firmly controlled territory of Rome and uh, with our allies. Uh, significantly less chance of running across hostile forces. Lavia nods for understanding and agreement. The safest road is always the better one. It will take longer. 
I would estimate but... off the top of my head approximately two weeks, perhaps three, if there is a, another detour. So two months at the, at the outset, 30 to 35 days at the very earliest if we push ourselves quite hard. But, uh, I suppose if it is safer, then it's the better route. But, Fabiana, oh. we cannot leave the day after tomorrow. There's going to take time to prepare for the operations. We're going to need people, we're going to need supply. It's going to take time. And we get the most, maybe. Um, Gaius just, he looks at you guys, he goes, there's obvious surprise on his face. He goes, "I stay prepared to travel at all times. Uh, my compound, you don't, you do not. Wagon, some men to scout our travel route during the day and find us secure accommodations. Travel at night. Money for bribes. Food. Two nights, maybe three, perhaps to prepare. Um." I imagine taking care of your personal uh, issuing instructions and uh, ensuring your men and women have um, sufficient loyalty to, to watch over your properties. It will probably take you the longest. Slightly. The coat is going to be require a lot of preparation to be kept in line while we are away. Perhaps we can call upon that through the favor with the, um, what is the name of the ventral guy? Uh, Valerinius. Yes, perhaps we can call upon Valerinius to keep the coating line. Um, um, we better not. It, um, I'll just know. And Drotsmoss doesn't say anything, say anything, but, um, when, when um, Alberta mentions the name, um, he's generally in mu it, you know, has a much less, um, affable, easygoing, uh, demeanor these days, you'll know. And he actually, he don't, again, he doesn't say anything, but he actively scowls at the mention well, of the name if, before if you guys, himself. If you guys call in the Major Boon, he is honor-bound, honor and duty-bound to, um, not fuck it up. And to not, like, betray you. He has to repay you to the fullness of his ability. So, that's actually a pretty safe thing to do. Is, is to say, we're, we're calling in our major boon on you to watch this stuff for us. And he has to do it. I mean, that's certainly an assured way of uh, making sure it's uh, kept running while we're gone. Um, do you guys remember how you won that major boon, right? You yes. may be honor bound to see this through, but you will be providing him information that he can use at a later time. So, if I were you, I would think about it carefully. And also, I personally want, do not uh, trust him. Well, I suppose the question is, do we have any other viable options in, uh, and can we find them in uh, a quick amount of time? Out of character, will it be possible for me to volunteer one of my goals? He will act as an administrator of the cult, he will not direct the cult, but he will advise them. Um... <sighs> That's probably not a great idea, just because he's not going to be familiar with the goings-on and be able to fully anticipate their needs. Um, Albana, your sire, could do it. Um, Falzia might do it, but she also might get really fucking bored and forget about it. 
and you will get a cult members yeah. become experiments. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I did think about Fel Felzia, but I'm like, eh. yeah, yeah, cult of Maybe personality not such a great idea is, a, is not really her strength. <laughs> Here's a question. Um, are we currently even in, as a, as a group out of character, are we currently even in balance with a Um, You're actually on decently good terms with him. But And we don't currently owe him, yeah? Actually, you do currently owe him, but not... Uh, let me go through... Let me go through the boon list. He's always up for getting more... more uh, owing more. Um, let's see... Uh, Labian and Hatshepsut both owe Falzia. Albana, well, Nicodemus no longer, because he's not here anymore. So I can mark that one off. Um, Albana, Labiana are both in debt to Ihamas. Hatshepsut's in debt to Ihamas. Albana is also yeah. in debt to Not Lachos. too much, though. Those are, they are... Trivial boons, so yeah, they're not bad. I believe the entire there has also the major boon uh, with Ihamus because of his help in locating Hatshepsut. No, that was a Valeronius thing as part of the payment. No, no, I no, I see it. The coterie, major boon, Ihamus and Larthia. So yeah, you guys do owe him. He's always more than willing to get more because um, you have proved to be quite profitable trading partners with him. And they're also so, reliable. Yep, you have not fucked him over yet. 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 <laughs> I mean, there was that one time the werewolf go back in the beginning. Well, you guys didn't screw him over. That was outside Sorry. circumstances. Yeah. If, if anything, we ended up if anything, by causing that, we ended up getting him yeah. more profit. Yeah, generally. he actually yeah, he actually earned earned favors from um, a Methuselah out of that, so he counted that as a win. Plus, you're older and more mature now, and uh, um, he's confident that you would not attempt something so stupid again. And and. Um... And obviously, he will. He very much knows. Um, at least he very much knows how to do this kind of thing. Well, that's a question of um, Albana, and well, Albana and Dr Albana. I'm going to have you roll. Okay, I'm going to phrase this: Albana or Labiana. You guys decide which. Would like you to roll your um, wits plus theology plus contacts, and since you're helping, it add add a single dice to reflect putting your heads together to help. So one of you two roll this. Would you like to do it, Lepian, or would you like me to do it? Uh, do you have contacts? Nope. Me neither. <laughs> I do, however, have. In theology, my theology is true, so you're probably better. Okay. So in my case, it'll just be wits plus yeah. theology plus one dice. Yep. I would say investigation, but I think theology is a better role for both of you guys. <laughs> I can't remember if it's uh, greater than or less than symbol. <laughs> Can someone remind me? Please. Uh, I don't know. Just put slash roll however many dice it is, and then we'll read the result. <laughs> I'll try both. Yeah. There. She says greater than. There you go. Outstanding. So yeah, Labiana, you've heard rumors on the street um, as you've gone about your daily business of a few snake cults and cults to Typhon, which is the Roman god of the underworld, popping up. Um, is this Ihamus is doing? You have no idea. But, you know, 
Egyptian influence sort of thing. Maybe reasonable to assume that he knows a little bit about it. B. And he's shown that he will recruit disciples. So he knows how to run a cult. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. the answer. Yeah. That's the correct answer. <laughs> yes. So, like I said, Blubby and a, uh, had pondered uh, upon the suggestion of Ahamus and then, you know, proceeds to sort of point out what she remembers um, regarding that information, says, to be honest, I think Ahamus might be the better choice in this regard. I mean, if we're up for owing him more boons, of course. <laughs> Uh, there is a great deal of respect and affection for your hands. I have a, a but I will not be so sure that you not try to include his own teachings within a cult, which might not be desirable. J jokes on you, a bunch of those teachings are already in there. <laughs> I mean, Alvina ultimately does not really care for the teachings because the cult is just a facade for her, but that's something that she's putting out there for the others that actually might care about what the mortals are learning. Yeah. Well, it also depends on how long we'll be gone, but um, I guess, you know, we won't be gone forever, so... Besides, I think it'll be fine, but it's not just up to me, of course. But the point is, we do have to make this decision rather quickly. Unless anyone else has got any other suggestions. I can speak to my side. Understand that recently she might have come into quite a bit of free time on her hands. She, as she says this, she does tosses a glance towards Decius. Um, Decius just nods, uh, uh, understanding the uh, joke there. Okay. Well. Uh... Have a chat with uh, your sire and see what she says, and then we can make our decision from there, I suppose. But, uh, out of character, I also saw something in the letter. I'm wondering if it would pay to sort of um, just turn around to princeps and I'm not sure if it would be her place to kind of get pre I don't know almost like pre-approval her sire to come back to Rome um do you show him the letter I mean I w yeah because it mainly because it has that in yeah. it. <laughs> okay, he takes it, he reads it. He nods. And he says, uh, uh, Your sire and I have met many long years uh, ago, and is one of the reasons I uh, accepted you to come into the city, was his word. Uh, he is more than welcome to... Uh, pledge his loyalty to us and uh, reside within our walls. I thank you, my princeps. I will approach the prince, bow, and see. Um, the first is the first citizen. A few months ago, we encountered some these strange bust statues. 
in the haven of Flavia's former sire. There's something curious about them. And when I investigated it, it was very, very dangerous. So I would like to give them to you and let you decide what will be done to them. He just nods. Um, Have a... Bring them to the bathhouse. And they will be stored appropriately. I'll take care of them. You can tell the wheels in his head are already turning. How do I turn this to my profit? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be rid of them after that whole week of them influencing me. Um, so I ask Gaius if we... When do I have to send some people to pick them up? Okay, yeah, they take care of it. Yeah. yeah. Retainers and herd are awesome. Yes, they, they take care of these minor errand for you, no problem. All right, uh, so the princeps just says, so you have preparations to make. And then he kind of like waves at you like, he expects you to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for saying us, uh, Princeps. Indeed. And... Baby Anna will turn to leave. I started to bow, and you will also leave. Alpina is going to proceed to leave, but then she's going to turn to... Flavia puts a hand on her shoulder. That might be a good... I'm going to go see my sire to... speak to her about the possibility of having her running the cult while you're out. Perhaps she might be a good opportunity for you to meet with her. Um, Flavia will nod her head to the princeps in acknowledgement and then she will turn to Albina, Albina, sorry, and she will also nod in agreement. Then, seeing her agreement, Albina is then going to turn to uh, the other ones present and give them all a respectful bow before proceeding to uh, step outside. Right. Um. I'm gonna find that picture of Amelia. Uh, your sire still maintains her traditional haven. Uh, you noticed in the last couple of months, it has already taken on more activity. Uh, it appears she's building up her own um, series of worshippers in the form of a herd, uh, very similar to what you've done. The old learning, uh, the old taking a page from the young. No, I mean, she did it before, but it was basically ripped from her um, as, a, as a motivation to uh, do her duties to the fullness of her ability so she can get it back. So. Yeah, but now that she is no longer burdened by the duties of, uh, of thinning out the the unworthy, um, she has time to work on her own stuff. Right, so um, she has a uh, haven. It's, it's on the Palatine Hill. Um, there's a small temple tucked away um, in the uh, underneath the streets and going uh, somewhat near the temple of uh, why am I blanking out on that freaking name 
the chick with the villa with the hearth. I want to say uh, Hephaestus, but that's not it. Juno. It's near the temple of Juno, but it's the uh, the temple the virgins. Fuck. Oh, the Vestal. Virgin. Thank you, Vestals. I don't know why I blanked out on that. Um, it's somewhat close to that, uh, and it's, it's somewhat small. Um, it is, of course, wreathed in shadows and uh, a few guardians. Um, they recognize Albina. It's been a while since you've been here, um, several months, because uh, she does keep your blood bond going, of course. So you bring a visitor. Uh, Flavia, I need you to make a courage roll. Um, it's going to be at difficulty four because Albina's right there with you. Uh, a, a reassuring hand on your shoulder. All right. You managed to, uh, to suppress the shudder as living shadows reach out from the darkness and caress your face they should have no substance yet somehow they do you swear you could feel a chill of as uh, uh, these dark uh, shadows uh, cast by the recessed torches um, writhe in the in the blackness and they wipe around your feet and they caress up your legs and they touch your face and they touch your hair and your hair kind of floats a little bit on these currents of uh, shadow. Um, this is all quite normal to Albina. She, she, she's been she's experienced this for uh, a long, 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 long time. For you, um, just walking into this den of obtenebration, um, and there's it feels like there's eyes, hidden eyes, and cracks just watching you from um, the barest tiny. Uh, cracks into the oblivion. You feel if you crawled into one of these cracks, you'd never find your way out. Um, it's it's hideously scary. Um, it's all, all with Albina there beside you, though. You have the courage to walk down the steps and into the chamber where Amelia awaits, and she looks somewhat similar to Albina, as a matter of fact. Long black hair, um, a beautiful face. Uh, she is uh, sitting in front of a uh, carpet of some sort, some sort of mystic pattern on it. You, you can't quite make it out. Um, and um, as you come in, uh, even though you've made no noise, she stands up and turns to greet you. She says, uh, Albina, my daughter, you bring a visitor. I'm not looking more visibly visibly becoming a tease and relax within the shadows and the, as they caress her. She's going to proceed to give her say, a deep bow, her head touching the ground as she lowers herself. Mother, this is Fabia, the newest member of her coterie, the adopted child of Alexander. I understand that the death of her sire is quite a show in Elysium. In the bathhouse. He died the befitting one who with no manners, no morals, and no convictions. By all accounts, though, uh, it would seem you are taking wonderful care of uh, one who has done better than to inherit his lack of well, of anything redeeming. <laughs> it is being uh, experienced to guide her, to guide young Flavia into becoming a member of a society. It is nearly as if I having another child. Um, Flavia, you look at Amelia and you meet her gaze and as you are meet her gaze you you realize exactly who you're talking to amelia for something like 50 years has been the designated killer of the princeps 
she has been the one to thin the herd. Um, she was the scourge. Uh, she scourged those unworthy from the surface of this earth. And you are looking up at the face of a woman who has killed probably 300 canites. Maybe more. There are rumors on the streets. Things that you've heard from the neonates that would talk at parties or what have you. Of how they would be talking. One would turn away for a second. There would be shadows and then that one would be gone and the shadows would be gone and they would be have taken this person. Um, so she reaches out and she touches your chin and picks your, picks your chin up a little bit to look at you. And she's like, Well, it would seem Marcus had to, certainly had better taste in uh, chill than he did in artwork. If uh, Flavia is allowed to step away a little bit from touch she will try to echo the low bow that albina had offered her sire as a sign of respect for being welcomed um she just nods um you notice there's literally nowhere to sit in here um if you're gonna sit you have to sit on the ground and uh so she remains standing and she says so um, as much of a pleasure as it is to uh, have you here, uh, I take it this is a visit of business? Yes. Recently, the sire of La Viena has called upon her. It seems that the war in the north has started to affect her business, has affected her nightly endeavors and she requests the assistance of her child Labiana of course will be ready not to answer the call and we will be heading along with her this leaves the matter of a court they cannot be trusted to maintain themselves while we are away they go how rowdy they grow disloyal. They need a watchful eye and a ready hand to keep them in line. I was hoping to call upon you to take up that role, to be the whip that prevents them from getting any ideas while our gaze is turned away. She nods, thinking about it. She says, uh, I shall claim one of them for my own, but otherwise your cult shall remain as it is when you, when you leave. I will ensure it. Elvina bows once again to her. Thank you, mistress. Pick whichever one catches your fancy. Um, she just nods. She says, I expect to see, and she looks at Flavia, I expect to see you back here again. The light of gold has so often been absent from my home. Flavia says that she will do her best to please the mistress. I would like you to make a charisma plus etiquette roll. If 
if you need any help setting that up, just let me know. This is to, uh, to sound like you actually mean it. <laughs> Is the difficulty? Ah, uh, six. Um, excellent. Uh, yes. Uh, you managed to sound charming and lovely, and that you fully intend to walk through this hideous gauntlet of shadows to come see this hideous killer uh, of your own free will. Um, she smiles, and you get the impression that she hasn't had the chance lately to practice not looking like a killer shark. And her 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 smile very much looks predatory, um, even though she doesn't mean it to. She's, I'm looking forward to it. Flavia bows again. Not as low as before. Um, perhaps you should not um, spend too much more time here. Your preparations uh, undoubtedly will be taking up as much opportunity, as much time as uh, as possible, and you will want to get them done quickly. Yes, yeah, they expect to take. Uh, at least two days to provide everything needed for the trip. Thank you once again for saying us, mistress, and for accepting this request. I should go over to Fabian, waiting for her to see if the girl has anything that she'd like to say. Fabian just expresses once again her gratitude for being invited here to meet Amelia. She keeps her thoughts to herself about her first impressions of this vampire, which she might wish to share later once they're out of earshot, because I think deep inside she is afraid of Amelia, and so she should be, but at the same time she finds her very intriguing and there's this unexplained pull that she feels to this woman she can't explain. Yeah, I have to make a note of that. All right. Um, for the purposes of uh, brevity and speeding this along. Um, what preparations are you guys making? We'll start with, uh, let's do Albina first. What else are you guys preparing? Well, Albina, you... Uh, first of all, try to also take you for the way of traveling. Would I be able to arrange a, a cart? Perhaps uh, some horses and perhaps a driver? Um, if I might, um, bring something up first, actually, because assuming that nothing was, no one directly addressed Androtomos, uh, otherwise during the, uh, thing, he is going to approach the country afterwards and offer a fairly simple deal. Um, he is willing to go with them, grant assistance in, um, finding, in ensuring some, uh, you know, good supply of food, shelter, you know, helping them travel and uh, defense, that kind of thing. Um, but distinctly, he distinctly notes that unless unless circumstances force him to, he will not take part in any suppressions, so to speak. Um, he's had enough, he's had more than enough of his fill of that for quite a while, thank you. Um, and all he requests in return 
is assistance with a matter that he has put off far too long back here. What do you mean? I wish to find Mahendra of my clan and ensure that he is dealt with properly. Mahendra? Mahendra, that name? Yes. Sounds familiar. What has he done to the ire of your clan? Or at least of your ire? I know what he has done to us. But to you, I'm curious. You do not seem to be the type that seek revenge. He and the group that he is a part of bring uns bring far too much dishonor on a name that already has its share. Let's just leave it at that. So it's not in revenge for a personal offense, but rather for dirty in the name of your clan. I suppose that's the simplest way to put it, yes. You can count on my existence on my assistance in this. I'm too Very well. Back. Hmm? Sorry what? Right. Um oh. just so you guys know. Uh, I'm sorry, Lamy. Were you gonna say that you were in agreement with that? I believe I was. Uh, I, I apologize for interrupting that. Um, just so oh, you guys right. know, um, Gaius Marcellus is going with you. Um, he is bringing a travel cart pulled by two horses loaded with supplies, including um, food and two thick canvas tents. Um, he has a cart. The cart has a man in the back. Uh, he has a driver, and he has a third man that scouts out the route ahead. Uh, and they have a, a system of messenger pigeons set up where he can send messages back and forth. Or at least the, the scout can send messages back to the cart. Um, so, Gaius recommends traveling at night, not during the day. Makes sense. We're gonna need a herd to feed. It's gonna take a long while to get there. And I'm not gonna rely on what we can find along the way. You're gonna need a stable source of blood if you're gonna make it there. Well, Gaius just kind of shakes his head. He's like, we're, we're gonna have to rely on what we find. We can't. We can't travel with a large group of people. Um, we're going to attract too much attention, and it's going to slow us down a lot already. Um, is a uh, is a uh, guy on the road? He's never talked about it. He's still uh, he's a, uh, he is still pretty young. Um, he is as a Knight, uh about shit. When was the Third Punic War done? Because he was embraced in Carthage in the battle. Yeah. Um, for at least two of us, yeah, he, uh, very he, he's likely. 50 for, <laughs> as a vampire. <laughs> for at least two of us, very likely three, I can at least, you know, supplement um, the mortals we find, on, find along the way with, you know, um, animal summonings. We, we always find a way to manage in terms of making do with what we can find along the way. I believe we do not have another choice at this moment, so we have to make do with what we have. That might be something that we can take to feed us. 
I tried to before she went into her tofu, she left behind quite a great deal of I do not know uh, typhoons brew, I believe she called it. So the ceremonial beer, that's almost depleted. Oh. Then never mind. And you want to keep a little bit around for, for topping off some of the ghouls. Yeah. It's mostly there for ceremonial purposes for the for the cult. Um, yeah. I'd like to ask an OC question, if I may. Guys just nods. I'm out of character. Yeah, OC question. Oh yeah, go for it. Um, could they use Flavia's canine in any way to sniff out potential prey, potential humans that they could feed on? Would that help in any way? Um, he's not really a hunting dog. Uh, with an with the Androtomus's animalism, they actually have a lot more reliable methods of scouting for that kind of stuff, in the form of birds and and things like that. Okay, that's fair. Thank you. So, um, Albina, uh, with a 40, you're, with, you're, you're talking about a round trip, and I already did the calculations on this. Um, if you tap out the cult expenses and your personal stuff, and you take a little bit from uh, um, Flavia, then yes, you can afford a cart with two horses and a driver to drive it. Alternatively, I can drive. Yes, because we all remember what happened the last time you guys hired a driver to drive a cart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Poor boy traumatized for the rest of his life. And he did not even talk us back. He just fucking quit on us, the bitch. He just left us there. I got yeah. you where you paid me? Fuck off, I'm out of here. <laughs> exactly. He's like, fuck this shit, I'm out. <laughs> More than my job's worth. Eldritch Horror, uh, oh. having to deal with Eldritch Horrors are not included in the contract. So, the cart and two horses, um, without a driver, um, if you tap out your resources and the cult temporary resources, then you can afford that, yes. <laughs> Um, Tec te actually, technically, do we even need um to buy two horses to rent you're, two you're, horses? You're renting, renting them. Yeah. Do we even need to rent the to rent two of them though? Since um, yeah, and I have one. Or Your is it horse not isn't really cart yeah. trained. That's the thing. Yeah, that's fair enough. I was just wondering. Mm. I'm done. I'm, I my ghoul can ride, can drive the carriage, because he has to ride. Okay, well, that takes care of that, too, so Andronimus can ride his horse. Yeah. And, of course, I suppose it goes without saying that uh, we'll have to make sure we're uh, prepared with weapons and whatnot. Yeah, you guys can get all that. You all... Uh, Everybody else, except uh, Flavia has um, already has basically weapons of from from many years of of travel and doing this kind of stuff, bows, arrows, um, swords. Uh, I think each of you has have your have your own silver knives and your silver plated blades that you carry on occasion. So, yes. Flavia Flavia can borrow hats, mace. 
Don't oh, pull it out gosh. of its leather wrap until you're really ready. Because you're going to get a hell of a surprise. Oh, God, yeah. I forgot about that somehow. Out of character. Out of character. Uh -huh. Did they meet that thing permanent? It has a set number of uses. And they never <sighs> expire. Okay. So yeah, you're handed a mace with a warning. Don't unwrap it until you need it and expect a surprise. Uh, Flavia. Oh boy. She's got this this these big saucer eyes happening right now. And wondering if she should just hand it back and use her little knife that she has on her thigh instead. Because this is scaring her. Yeah. Does she have the strength to wield it? I, I imagine this beautiful woman holding it with two fingers at, at arm's length like, yeah, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think she would prefer to know something about this mace so that she's not freaked out when she does have to use it and it somehow hinders her from using it because she's completely freaked out. Well, I'll leave that to you guys to explain. Uh, it has been enhanced. With burning passion? Yes. But what does that mean exactly? The enhanced? Tip, the tip bursts into flames once it is unsheathed. A supernatural flame, of course. Oh. So it's like a torch mace. That is correct, yes. It is not going to cause you, your beast to rise up in fear, or at least it shouldn't, but... I can tell from personal experience that it is quite real flame, and you should keep it away from your flesh. Yeah, okay, well, th thank you for trusting me with it but you should know that my skills with weapons of like 99 percent of weapons are, are very 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 crappy to put to say the least i'm not really a fighter have the more reason oh. to give you the mo the best weapon that we have among us after all every single hit that you get is going to count that way Oops. can i, I just ask one thing Sorry for interrupting. I'm gonna be done after that. That you guys stay away from me while I'm wielding this thing because I don't want to accidentally set any of you on fire. Child, you'll not be the first oh, member of the Scotty to set another one on fire. <laughs> oh god. But ultimately, I suppose the main thing to remember is to uh, keep the mace pointed at the thing you, you're trying to destroy. <laughs> Speaking of fire weapons, you might be able to do that too, in case more of you want to have sparkling weapons. I personally prefer my weapons to be clothed in darkness, not in light. I mean, I suppose I'll bear that in mind. Yeah, I think I think we have most of the preparations sorted. Um, okay, so um, you guys gather up your uh, things, um, you feed before you leave, um, so I'm, I'm assuming everybody feeds up to full, I'm not even going to make you make a hunting roll for that. Uh, but a question, um, do we know like the things that are on the way? 
um, like, do you know the inns, the taverns, the places that would be able to take shelter along the way? There's not really much of that. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple of major cities, and let me call up the interwebs, and I'll give you a couple of them. Uh, but mostly, uh, it's going to be staying at like farmhouses and, and things like that. Maps. All right. Well, do, 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 while that's opening. Um, yeah, he plans, Gaius plans mostly on paying people to let him stay in barns and, and things like that. Cause that way they can avoid so he wants to travel up the coast uh, by cart. He wants to avoid ships because ships mean pirates, and pirates mean trouble. Um, Indeed. His anticipated route is to travel up the uh, west coast, um, all the way up to near uh, modern-day Genoa. And then uh, he's going to turn a little bit more northeast, just a hair, and head up into the foothills of the uh, Alps, um, north of uh, Milan, so to where like the Como region is. And then staying in the foothills of the Alps, uh, he will turn east. Um, so if you hit Milan, Milan is of uh, course a city of historical significance, uh, Como, uh, a village of significance, um, uh, and then travel to Padua. So there's going to be uh, leaving Rome. There be it's going to be one, two, three, three, four, five, six, six villages of significance in this uh, forty night travel. So about every um, about every once a week or so, a little, little bit more than once a week, you're going to hit a major. Um, population center and but he wanted to avoid those as much as possible just because of the possibility of violence and not sure where the fighting's at <laughs> if you can take advantage of that stuff great he's uh totally on board with it but if you can't, then, um, you know, you're prepared. I'm yeah, thinking of uh, sending some kind of messenger, some kind of runner ahead to prepare uh, the places for us, but that's not yeah. really an option. Yeah. Then. He's, he's got that covered. Oh, okay. Yep, Gaius has that covered. He sends a guy ahead during the day, and they have a messenger pigeon, which is going to fly back to the... Uh, his uh, ghoul staying with the cart. Um, that's going to say, you know, 30 miles down the road, I found a place. Uh, watch out for this and this. So he's got uh, three ghouls with him, one of whom's a scout, one's a driver, and one is uh, like a daytime guard. I suppose also in all the, the preparations, one thing, I suppose one personal thing Labiena is going to do is, uh, I don't know whether she'd bother sort of making like bullet point notes, so to speak, uh, of some of the research uh, she's done lately for the purposes of taking it to her sire. Um, you probably have more time to talk about it than read. Once you, once you got reach reach him, because uh, you're not gonna have a lot of time to sit and 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 like read stuff by candlelight. You're gonna be packing up and get going. Oh, true. Yeah, because he'll be coming back. That's right. So in the end, she probably won't bother with that then. And. Me for my preparations, 
I assume that after all these months, the locket, the item that I wanted to create to store the piece of the, my sister's blood in it was finished. Yes, that's yes. done. Yeah. Then I'm gonna use a ritual on it. My first. And don't know how to pronounce pronounce it. Ambrose Calamans, Aegis, on it. It's a first thought ritual. Okay, I'm just gritting on your character sheet so I can look that up real quick. What's it do? I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, blood sorcery, there it is. The second one. It's more like a protection. Oh yeah, hundred percent, absolutely. I, I, I'm surprised you don't have that thing on you at all times. <laughs> okay, see, so here goes. Believe me, if I had that ritual, I would have that motherfucker on me at all times. <laughs> That's the plan from now on. <laughs> All right. It has a number of charges on it equal to your successes. Right. Or no, sorry, equal to your thaumaturgy rating. Yeah, so that's whatever that is. All right. Um, any other odds ends preparations you guys would like to make that uh, might be important? Um, because if not, then um, Gaius is ready. His card is ready. Um, he introduces the two of his ghouls that you see as... i got to get back, get off the map page here. He introduces his driver um, as Julian and the man in the back as Gratius. Uh, the man in the back is sleeping. Um, the cart is pulled by two horses. It's loaded with supplies. It's got food couple of thick canvas tents. Um, Gaius is on a, a horse as well. Uh, you notice that the uh, what spare space is in the back. Um, there's a spot cleared for uh, uh, Flavia to ride in the back of this cart. And a spot for her dog as well. Um, of course, she could sit up front with the driver if she wanted to. Uh, there are a couple of tower shields on this cart, one on each side. In the event of trouble, you could grab the tower shields and stick them up and hide behind them. Um, Gaius has a tower shield on his horse with three javelins attached. Um, has a broadsword on his hip, which is a deviation from the standard gladius. Uh, and Julian has a crossbow ready to fire underneath his um, underneath his seat. So it's it's set and blocked all he's gonna do is knock the safety block out and fire a crossbow if he needs to nice. you guys have your cart your two horses um you said you're gonna have barrack ball drive it right astartus that is correct okay Barrack Ball is in the, his massive um, massive form, sitting dead center, um, taking up most of the seat. Uh, reins in his hand, ready to ride on. He's ready if you're ready. Well, I believe we should get going. If we're all ready. Yep. I don't believe I need any preparations to make. Nope. Um, Alright, you guys head out. Traveling. You head up the coast. Um, your first two weeks are pretty uneventful. Uh, you... I don't know who the uh, aggravated that she has along the way. Um, yeah, I, I assumed you've healed that over the short time skip we just did. Well, yes. Um, first couple of weeks are uneventful. You stop in a couple of major towns 
and the as you go up, you feed um, to keep your the the beast at bay. Um, you have maintained yourselves um, ready. The horses are, are you're going at a, a decent pace, no problems. Um, however, when you begin to turn uh, from Genoa up and begin heading a little bit more east, um, due to the violence and the the winter the time of year and everything. Um, it gets more difficult to navigate, especially because he's traveling at night and he wishes to keep a low profile. He's trying not to be, um, if you travel on the major roads, you have a, a more of a chance to run into hostile forces also using the major roads. Uh, so Androdimus, uh, I would like you to make a, uh, wits plus survival roll, um, to navigate, um, through the region. Um, add, uh going to add yourself an extra dice as you uh, because you have a, a mortal that's running ahead to also warn you uh, of dangers and stuff like that so I will spend a willpower on this what's the difficulty sorry uh, it's difficulty six each willpower you spend you're not going to get back until um, there's a major we have a major like scene turn oh yeah that, that's fine Um, that's three successes. All right. Uh, your first night passes uneventfully. No problems. Uh, make one uh, Make one more, please. Oof. And I didn't spend a willpower on that one. But not a botch, at least. Okay. Not a botch. Um... And Dragomus, what um, precautions have you been taking every night um, as you've been out kind of scouting ahead a little bit? Explain, talk about your routine. Um, scouting ahead. Um, well, g g generally, he's um, keeping to the road as usual, riding off a bit ahead of everyone else. Um, sort of... Brain, now is not a time to stop working. Um, he's trying to um, keep a sort of low profile if he goes on ahead. Um, if he keeping an eye out at all at all times for like anyone who he does any like figures appear, any like beasts, um, whether beast or you know, uh, mortal form. Um, if he sees anything like that, like that, immediately, you know, like going back a bit uh, while he uh, tries to determine what it is. All right. Um, like you to make a uh, perception and alertness roll at uh, difficulty eight. Ah. Zero uh, all right. Uh, you guys are traveling along, nice and quiet. Um, you're passing a couple of elevated hills, and I'm going to need initiative rolls from everybody. Uh, this is a surprise attack on you, unfortunately, so you don't get any chance to boost your stats or anything like that. And Androdimus. Uh, I'm going to drop you up ahead a little bit. So it's going to take you a couple of rounds to get back to him. Yeah. Uh, and drops, put yourself up on the, the northern curve of this map. Uh, it's just going to take you... Uh, like three rounds to get back to everybody. Which isn't much. It's like 15 seconds, but... Still enough to make the difference in a fight. So you say mm -hmm. Northern Curve, so like... Yeah, yeah right there. Or... That's good. Yeah, that, sound, that looks good. Okay. Yep. Alright. Let's, uh... 
let's put people on the map and add some turnage. Uh, so put your guys, put your, put yourselves on uh, your cart down here, or walking beside it, or what have you. Uh, it's up to you guys if you're walking or riding on it. And I need that. Just OOC comment. I think I might have done something. I got wrong. I got you on the map for you. It's fine. Apologies. Wait, are we all on the one cart though? Or? No, I thought you guys were on your own cart because uh, it's there's, so there's only so like much here. room on the front cart because that's that's uh, Gaius Marcellus's. He's on his own horse, riding north up here. Just ahead. All right, so it's one, two, three, four, five, boom. I'm not gonna worry too much about the ghoul placement. You guys just tell me where they went. All right, and I'm just gonna need to add one more thing here. So I have to roll for um, roll initiative for Barak Bar. Uh, have him go on your initiative. Why did I just do that? That was stupid. And I might put, I, I'm, I'm being stupid and putting this on the map. No, I'm good. All right, four, one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so you guys are walking along the road. There's a couple of hills um, and an elevated bank. Uh, it's a little bit more than head high on you. So you're, you're in a little bit of a depression um, as you're going along these curves. Um, and you can see the foothills beginning to rise up uh, in, to the mountains uh, as you uh, looking further north. Um, <clears throat> your first warning that anything has gone wrong is a clatter of arrows uh, that uh, shoot out against you guys. Um, so Albina and... Astartes, you guys are getting targeted. Uh, Flavia, you are getting targeted. And uh, the driver of the cart is getting targeted. Oh, I'm missing one. That's why it looks so weird. It's supposed to be six of these guys. So, yeah. All right. Uh, Barrack Ball is also getting targeted. Alright. Uh, Barrack Ball is hit by an arrow. Um, Astartes, you're hit in the, in the heart with an arrow. Uh, Labiana, you are hit in the heart with an arrow. Um, Albina, you are hit with an arrow, but not in the heart. Flavia, you're hit in the heart with an arrow. Um, the driver... Uh, uh, is unfortunately also hit, but he is a ghoul. Um, the first, so a, a series of uh, bow shots come across um, through the air, uh, going from the top, rolling six. Uh, barrack ball, so let's see, barrack ball. Eric Ball has to soak. Uh, nothing. It just bounces off his armor. Does no damage. 
He is wearing armor, isn't he? Just bounces off of him. <laughs> no matter what. Yeah, I was just wearing boom. armor. All right. Uh, La Viena, you were hit uh, with two successes in the heart. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I, I got to roll two more dice. Or no. One, two, three, four, five, six, five. Yeah, eight. So eight D ten. Wabiana, soak one, two, three, four, five damage to your heart. Boy. Let's see. A stardust soak four damage to your heart. Nope. All right, so Barrack Ball, Labiana, Astartes. Uh, to soak is six. That's stamina, fortitude, armor, um, okay. and your charges if you wanted to. Yes, I'm definitely going to use my charges. I'm going to use two of my charges. That is a really unlucky roll. <laughs> yeah, looks like I'm staked. <laughs> So to speak. So barrack ball. One, two. Flavia, and like sorry, Lobiana can't help. He's right now. <laughs> um. So yeah, a stardust. It just kind of hits you and goes doing and just quivers. Uh on your chest, right over your heart, and you're like, oh, fuck! Um, and you feel the expenditure of, of, the, of the amulet <sighs> expending energy to protect you. Um, Labiana just falls backwards off the cart, and you hear this <laughs> as her body limply falls off. Barrack Ball's like, what the fuck? We're under attack! We're under attack! Um, Flavia you are going to roll your stamina plus your fortitude. Um, I'm going to rule that you bought some light, um, some heavy clothing. So you're going to roll stamina plus fortitude plus one extra dice um, for soaking damage. And I'll give but you your time to set that up. She, 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 she has no fortitude. Uh, okay, so it's stamina plus one for armor. One, two, three, four. I don't think you can soak all that with your stamina. Um, I don't believe so. Right, so for the first time in your own life, you feel this pain, um, sharp, as something pierces your chest, just whoop, and you can't move. Your eyes can't even move. You can't blink. You can't turn your head, um, and your body just limply falls against one of the tower shields, just sort of bounces as the horse is just kind of trotting along. Um, you have no control over it. It's terrifying. Uh, the the animal beast within you rages um, in an absolute panic um, that it's going to die. It's going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. you got to let me out. you got to let me out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it's like freaking out inside you, and you can't stop it. Um, so you are utterly paralyzed and panicking. You've never experienced anything like this. And the last one. One, two, three. Wow, he got fucked. Well, fortunately, the damage dice was suck was ass, and ghouls can soak lethal. Um, so yeah, the driver of the cart uh, also uh, an arrow and hits him in the front. And uh, also, just like Carter, sort of skids off um, the armor he's wearing. And um, he whoa, 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 tries to pull the cart over. We're under attack! And grabs a tower shield, um, backs up against Flavia, and like does his best to cover himself and Flavia with it. Um, so he's gone full defensive, blocking everything coming his way. Alright, uh, I need you guys to do... You're gonna, I'm going to have to do add the turn calculator, and you're going to have to tell me what your initiative ratings were. I hope you wrote them down. 
eight for up. Oh, God, Gaius. <laughs> Gaius did not roll well. All right, so you rolled an eight. Oh, but did I say, I don't know if I said you got an attack or not. I don't remember off the top of my head. And yes. Okay, so I didn't roll your. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You're about to you're about to teach these guys the meaning of mistake. So, Albany, you rolled an eight. Oh, so uh, wouldn't see eyes. Flavia took the weapons from Hackjet. Wouldn't also uh, didn't also take the armor? You tell me. Would Hatchet's armor fit you? Um, Astartus, what was your initiative? Um, I believe uh, seven. No, um, mine was six. Uh, oh, six. so my, uh, a names yeah. got mixed up. Sorry. Andromedus, you had a seven. You said. Yep. Uh, Labiana ro rolled the best at fourteen. It was a fourteen, yeah. It's a shame it won't do me much like... good right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag irony. Everybody rolled like shit, man. Almost everybody. Alright, let me put on some real music for you, and we're going to... Roll the, do this, roll this up, and battle music. Uh, I don't know if that's meant to be me, but somehow I ended up with the map image. Maybe because you're south in grass right now? Yeah, maybe. Is that better? Okay. Uh, arranged turns. Uh, numerically. Descending. What the hell? Uh, you should be on here, Laviana. Head turn. I know you're paralyzed, but you... S Somebody might rescue you. And you need to be on here. Um, quick question, uh, while we're, uh, getting into it, before we get fully into it still. Are the, uh, bandits or whatever up, up on the hills? Or yes, like, they have a raised position over you. Okay. And how high are the hills? Uh, about ten feet. So, uh, just a hair over, a hair over three meters. Um, and this road is, is kind of cut through them at the moment. Uh, it, it, it rises and falls over the hills. It just, in this particular section, uh, it's a good spot for an ambush, and that's why they, they picked it. Mm-hmm. Um, Aviana, unfortunately, are paralyzed. Uh, I'm going to rule these three guys all attack the front cart, and they're attacking the driver who, who has gone full defensive. Um, so he's going to attempt to parry all three of these arrows. Unfortunately, he must attempt to parry because they did actually hit. Uh, fortunately, he's fucking good. <laughs> that parries that one. Parries that one. Um, doesn't, but he only had one success, so roll 4d10 slash roll 6d10. Uh, so one arrow sticks in his shoulder a little bit, but he's he's like frantically using this tower shield to, to slam and block these arrows as they're coming. You can hear him, doink, doink, 
bouncing off, sticking in the in the wood um, as he is uh, taking full cover. Um, Albana, you are getting targeted. Ooh, that's a uh, that's a heart shot with two successes. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, soak three lethal damage to your heart. Mm -hmm. Just going to use the fortitude to soak, soak it up. That. Yep, awesome. Yeah, um, so it hits you, and um, your skin glows just a little bit briefly as it just boom, just rejects the damage. Um, and the arrow just kind of sticks in your clothes and hangs down a little bit. Uh, Barrack Ball is getting targeted by the other two. Because they don't want that cart moving if they can help it. Um, he does get hit. Rolling damage. Um, he needs to soak four lethal. And then it is Albina's turn. Or sorry, Gaius's turn. And Albina. Um, Gaius uses all uh, his time. He stands up on his horse, grabs his weapons, and leaps off his horse and clambers up onto the uh, onto the bank. So he manages to clamber up onto the bank. Whew, man, Barrack Ball's uh, fucking killing it, man. Good thing he's a ghoul and he can soak lethal. Yeah, that arrow, again, hits him. It just sort of just bounces, cuts a little groove in his armor as it bounces off of him. Uh, Albana, you're up. You're sort of yeah. walking along the trail path. The first thing that Albana is going to do is to put up a night, uh, nightshade, the stuff to create a shroud of darkness uh, around them. Nocturne. Nocturne, yes, yeah. thank you. And where are you going to put it? She's going to be putting it, it around, um, centered, centered around here. Okay. A place that will cover the cart with, uh, yeah. with. Okay. Um, I just think that's, I think that's not a roll, is it? You just do it, right? It is, it is a roll. Okay. It is a manipulation and a... A cult a should be. Roll. Yes. To determine the size of the darkness. Up uh, ten. All right. Success results in a cloud of impenetrable blackness ten feet in diameter anywhere within fifty yards. You may add ten feet to the diameter for each additional success. How how big you can go up to fifty feet in diameter. I'm going to make it to be just big enough to not include the horses. Okay. To just cover the cart itself and uh, and Albna, but not you know not choke the horses. Come on. I know I put you on objects. Why won't you select the black circle? Okay, anyways, there is a shroud of blackness from this cart, from this cart to the very front of this horse. All right. Uh, do you want to move any? Yes, and uh, would I be able to get on the cart and try to unstake Flavio? Um, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that. Um, if you unstake her, she's coming out in a frenzy. Good point. Mm -hmm. You can she's... unstake her and grab the other tower shield. Yes. Or, sorry, you can jump up and grab the other tower shield. I'm going to jump up and grab the tower shield. 
Okay, awesome. So, Flavia, your paralyzed body is sandwiched now um, between um, the driver and uh, now Albina, who have tower shields up and are um, trying to protect themselves, fully protect themselves with it. The poor guy in the back um, who was sleeping is burying himself under, like, goods and shit so that he doesn't get targeted because, you know, um, he's trying to sleep and he's still fucking tired. Uh, Andronimus. Um, so, am I, like, actually where I am on the map, or am I further away and that's just representing it? Um, you can be where you're at on the map, on your horse, so on your horse, two rounds to get to get to everybody. Um, and I'm guessing that's by looping around this way. Uh, no, by you kind of, like, if you, cli you can climb the hill on your horse... And get up on top, or you can turn around and run back alongside the trail. Your choice. Um, here's a question. Hypothetically, would I be able to get up the hill quicker if I had a ramp? A ramp? Yeah. Um, uh, an illusion won't work unless it's horrid reality. Oh, wait, no, you have that simple illusion, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, that would cut... Um, significant effort off. Yes, that would be great. Yep, so, um, with Curse as he realizes what's going on, um, Androtimus, uh, rears his horse around, heads straight over to, to the, um, to the, uh, to the, to the edge of the hill, and, um, focuses his will to make a simple, simple, but, but flat, and, uh, you know, easily movable ramp to da to dash up um, and uh, cut significantly into uh, his um, trying to get up back round to where the bandits are. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> that's huge. Um, the horse, you just take the horse right up the ramp. Um, runs up uh, the where ramp. Should I place, where should I place myself? I moved you. Um, okay. The horse has significantly more movement than you do. Obviously, this is why you write it. Hmm. Um, so I'm guessing that there's like three layers here. So there's a path, there's this bit, which is also That's the raised. trail. That's the trail. This is the hill. And so now you're going to run alongside this hill, which does kind of fall off a little bit. Hmm. I might I might ditch my horse after that because, uh, just to ensure it doesn't fall off. But, um, yeah. It's wide enough. Okay. It, it's wide enough. But yeah, so point is, I'm here uh, just in time as the illusion fades away. All right. Um, Astartus, you're up and about. Okay. How happy is Spark Ball? Um, I happen to decide I don't wait for him. About 270. Uh, 270 pounds, or for you... Um, for you rebel scum, what's 270 pounds divided by 2.2? Okay. So I cannot... Hold on. No. I don't have my cell phone on me. No, I cannot for, make for him calculator. fly. I cannot make him fly. This. If that's the case, I want to use... Um, I want to increase my dexterity and stamina. Okay. Increase my dexterity. Can I use? Can I, I? I increased my dexterity by four and my stamina by two. And can I use? Uh, can I use dormitory right now? Um, is it within your blood expenditure limit? No. Okay, no. If that's the case, I will run over to Labiana and try to... If you want Saker, she's coming out in a frenzy. So she may not, she will not necessarily be able to, to discern friend from foe. Yeah, but if I leave the fever like that, she's defenseless. I'm just saying, be ready. <laughs> oh, God. Fuck it, I'm gonna do it either way. Okay. Um, you leap over the cart, grab the arrow, 
Sorry, baby. Whack! Out it comes. And I prepare to dodge if she strikes at me. Top of the order, La Viena. You're out in a frenzy. <laughs> um, roll willpower. You're on a road with self-control or instinct. La Viena? I think she might uh, be at the in the back. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot to unmute. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I had to go AFK for a moment. Speaking um, of which, I will be right back. Okay, but yeah. uh, I believe she is on instinct now. Okay, uh, so yeah, you can either spend a willpower or you can roll your instinct to uh, guide your frenzy for this round. Uh, I'm wondering if I might be better off spending a willpower. Okay. I pointed the hills. <laughs> yeah. So you re your beast, you spend a willpower to like uh, just exert the barest amount of control. No, this one, friend, Bobiana, you just shove him out of your way. Um, the beast will make some blood expenditures to help you fight better. Uh, you tell me what it's doing: strength or uh, strength and dex or strength and stamina. I feel like she would, well, instinctively go for strength and dex. Um, she wants yeah. to move uh, faster and stronger. Yep. Just wondering how much for each. Would she spend max? It's, it's going to spend one blood for two? celerity, by the way. It's going to spend blood for extra actions. For however many okay. extra actions you get. She's got two celerity. All right, so it's, it's spending, um, it's spending two blood for celerity. Okay. And then it's going to split between um, strength and dex, or strength and stamina. Strength and stamina. Yep. Okay, so two each. Yeah, sounds good. Alright, All right, so your yeah. beast's first action is going to be to leap up this hill. You clamber up. Um, slavering, you're focused, and it takes um, all of your movement to do that, and you turn, and your second, your first celerity action is going to be to leap on this guy and grapple him, and your second celerity action is going to be to rip his throat out. Sounds good. Um, archers are going to make courage roll now as a group, because they didn't sign up to fight no magic people, you know, throwing magic darkness around and um, at difficulty six. Um, they make it barely. You hear, you hear, you hear calls up in the, in the uh, up above the wooded areas where where they were. You hear, oh shit, oh shit, what the fuck is this shit? Oh, gods protect us, gods above. What? Where do we shoot? Shoot them! Um, as as they're barely holding in their panic. Oh god. Uh. So the first group. Um, attempts to shoot uh, Albina and um, the driver, and all of their you, the two of you manage to block all three shots. Uh, the next two are shooting at uh, the slavering monster that just jumped up and climbed the hill beside them, um, and they hit six and. Have her uh, lobby and soak one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lethal stamina, armor, what is fortitude. This? <laughs> it's not a heart shot, though. Mm, this is true. All right, uh, let's see. Yeah, the, the two of them just turn into panic and they're like, oh, fuck! <laughs> Draw <it> back. <laughs> Grab the next bow, arrow, bow, or arrow, <laughs> knock her up. Get ready. Yeah. And yeah, the last guy's targeting the, the Venturu. I always keep forgetting to add the plus one for her uh, armor. Thick, like, yeah. 
yeah, for her cloak. Um, Alright, let's see how we go. Hold on, did I press the right thing? Alright, so the guy up here, who tar um, this guy targeted Gaius, it just bounces off the back of his armor. Just doink, bounces off. Alright, so um, Labiana takes two more Oops. lethal. So, ignore the second one. I, yeah. yeah. Didn't think it worked the first time. Yep. Alright, um, Gaius unlimbers a javelin, takes, uh, turns around to look at this guy up top, uh, takes aim, throws it across the trail. <gasps> Just heaves it at him. Uh, with many successes. Uh, so I took two. Yeah. Two, didn't I? This G, uh, that javelin hits this guy right in the head, and it just pierces through. <laughs> Goes all the way through his head. The bow drops to the ground. He falls and begins to slide down the slope a little bit. Completely dead. Either dead or may as well be. Yep. And then he turns, and he jumps up the rocks, and uh, he starts running this way. Um trying to get up so that he can uh, uh, get in with get in close on these guys and uh, get them off of his driver and friend um, Albana you're up uh, you're up yeah Albana is going to seeing Labiana getting back into action she's also going to take the recent proceed to try to stick for Lavia. okay um, no role required. Flavia, uh, suddenly you can move, and in exultant freedom, your beast um, demands to. Uh, what I'm going to give you the choice here: it can demand to fight and battle the things that that made it hurt, or it can try to run. What would your beast do? I think given her youth and her inexperience, she would opt to run even the play if the player would prefer to fight. I gotta stick with the character. Okay. She would run. Um, so your beast leaps off the cart, uh, see ya, and uh, begins running away into the woods. I'm I'm just gonna have you go with Albina on her turn, so we don't have to keep doing initiative stuff. Andronimus, your horse galloping, <laughs> uh, charging hard off the slope. Mm -hmm. um, you pass the point where that um, that guy got hit. Um, um, it it <laughs> charges down. Now you're even with the cart, um, and you you are within striking range if you jump off the horse. And go after the uh, these two archers on this side. You're in striking range of them. I'm gonna do it. All right, give me a Dex Athletics to leap off of your horse and uh, land re and land at a combat stance, ready to go. Um, what's the difficulty on this? Um, seven. Would my Daredevil merit apply? Your which merit? Dare oh Daredevil? Oh fuck yes, it does. <laughs> Hell yeah, it does. Dex Athletics, Diff 7. Yes, uh, that's, that's all you needed. Um, you leap off. You do a, a forward tuck roll. Uh, go, go rolling through the uh, damp grass and come up right next to this fucker. Yep, and then Dex my to Strike. Yep. Um, two to hit. Roll damage, please. 
Okay, so he's not um, dodging or the like. Um. Oh shit, I don't seem to have uh, Gladius uh, attack stats here. It's, strength uh, plus strength. two. Yeah, I figured that was it. Um, one damage. Right. Um, he's got heavy clothing on. Um, it your your blade kind of gets caught a little bit in the heavy clothing, and it slices it, and a little, couple of gaps fall open. Uh, but you don't you don't think you hurt him at all. Yeah. Nonetheless, um, perhaps hoping to take advantage of uh, of um, the. Sh just general shock and awe. He's just going to shout to them. I would advise running now. Um, yeah, so um, Astartes, you're up. Astartes? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, yeah, you're up. Um, how many feet between me and and the guy on the left of me? Um, you're going to have to climb up the bank, and that's going to take most of your movement. Okay. So I do not have a line of sight to anyone? Um, you do, kind of. Um, you can see, like, their heads as they had to jump up and draw and, and, and turn and, and shoot. So you got some line of sight. If that's the case, I'm going to use a little bit of blood sorcery right now. Okay. I'm going to lift myself, fly myself over the bank, um, right around the, the rock to my left. Do you see it? Up there? Yes. All right, and so... Um, can I attack now or no? Uh, ah. Attack with what? Uh, your, your, your action is to use thaumaturgy. Yeah, no, so... so yeah, you, you can't attack. No, I'm gonna wait then. Yeah. Um, so, uh... None of you guys are really paying attention enough to see this, which is a shame, because that was really cool. A starter just, like, makes a couple mutters and makes a couple of magic symbols, and he just lifts magnificently, cloak fluttering in the breeze, um, and sits down on top of the rock and grabs a knife and, and begins to prepare to throw... Uh, Labiana, for your celerity, I'm not even going to make you roll. You just leap on top of this dude, fangs bared, and he gets one startled. Oh, God, no! And then, and you rip his throat out. Blood begins to spurt, and your beast begins to greedily drink from it. Um, so, Labiana's going to end up gaining total eight blood points and he using that to heal. Nice. Um, this well, guy is... Uh, I don't want to die! And he takes off running. He slides down the, the slippery bank. You, you can see him sliding down, and he takes off running into the woods. I don't want to die! I don't want to die! Um, he's running. Smart thing anyone's ever done today. <laughs> um, hearing that, these two guys are going to make courage rolls of difficulty 8. And now that their companions are breaking and dying, um, they still manage to stand their ground. They're like, no, we got this! And, uh, one of them's going to turn to try to engage uh, Gaius, and the other two are going to shoot arrows at Astartes. And they got a super nice clear line of sight. I'm going to dodge them. All right, so you're, you're averting your action to dodge and set... Um, Instead of a uh, knife, that's fine. Um, Dex Athletics. Div 6? Yep. Alright, they still hit you. You attempt to dodge. Um, you get out of the way, but uh, it still gets you in the abdomen a little bit. Right in the ribs. Ah! But it does lessen the damage. 
by uh, some. A lot, apparently. Um, soak one lethal. No, not even. That was three ones and three successes. Um, so yeah, you just twist, and although they both technically hit you, it like the two arrows pass um, one at your ab and one at your the small of your back, and it just draws one sizzling line of pain across both sides of you as they just both barely skim you. Zwing! Uh, and, and you look down and you just got a little tiny cut across the small of your back and across your stomach. Um, the other one tries to uh, melee with uh, Gaius and surprisingly gets a single gets a hit in. Uh, but he's using his bow as a bashing weapon. So that's going to be worse. A strength plus two is a club. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I always throw six. Yeah, doesn't even phase him. It's just, just kind of like poof. And you guys see that same kind of glow uh, off the temple of... Uh, Gaius, as he just shrugs the blow off. Um, Gaius um, just draws that broadsword, bats the bow aside, and takes this dude's head off. One clean swipe. A little fountain of blood comes out as the body drops, and the head rolls onto the mud on the trail below. Um, these two guys are unfortunately about to die. Uh, Albina. Are you going to go after our fleeing um, neonates? Yes. yes. Right. Um, so Flavia and Albina engage in a foot chase until uh, Flavia's beast gets tired and Albina can help bring her back. Uh, Andronimus. There's two more guys on the other side of the trail. On, you mean on my side? No, or? On, the, on the opposite side. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Take out a uh, javelin and just uh, lob it one. All right, Dex Athletics. Ah, man, with four successes, I'm going to need you to roll damage. Your javelin takes him in the head, right in the forehead, right between the eyes, and he just goes, <laughs> and you see him sway a little bit. And then he just falls backwards. <laughs> and I look to the remaining ones, just say, You sure you don't want to run? Yeah. Labienne is drinking and healing. And uh, the last one's like, Nope, I'm not the one to die either. And he takes off running. Um, Astartes, do you want to chase him? I want to use blood sorcery on him to catch him and bring him over to me. Okay. Uh, I believe he can try to resist that. I gotta look that one up. It's been a while. I want to try a Jedi thing right now. Are we talking movement of the mind? Yep. <sighs> yep. Thought it sounded familiar. <laughs> Um, the target is unwilling, so the caster and subject must make opposed willpower rolls to do this. So first, you got to activate the discipline. So do that first. That's a willpower roll at difficulty six. I love former Tudis so much. <laughs> All right. Um, now make an opposed willpower roll. So roll your seven dice against his two. Difficulty six? Yep. I think he's going to lose this. Yes, he does. Um, he's running away. I don't want to die! I don't want to die! And suddenly his feet leave the ground, and he's still kicking like, ah, oh, ah, ah! And he starts to turn, like, upside down, like you've grabbed him by his belt loops or something. And he's, like, kicking and screaming, Oh, no! And, and um, he's caught, and you begin to just pull him with your mind. Lift, pull backwards. Uh, and I shake him up a little bit so he can drop his weapons along the way. Well, he's got a death grip on his bow. Um, 
but he's not knocking an arrow into it, I'll tell you that. Uh, but you can only yeah. hold him for a turn, so you grab him, lift him, and bring him back. And you bring him right back to where he was. Um, set him down. Um, hold on, babe. I can hold him more than a turn, right? Nope. Or is it one turn for each success? Let me check. And I had four successes. No, so each, yep, each success turns. allows you to manipulate it for one turn. Yeah, so you're, you've got him held up. And he's like, no, 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 put me down, please, no, no. And, um, yeah, that's the end of combat. We're out of it. Uh, yeah. Albina, you do I'm eventually gonna... chase Flavia down uh, when her beast gets tired of running and she comes out of it. Flavia, you come <laughs> out of this lost in the woods. Um, no idea where you're at. Would I be able to use Nightshade to create the illusion of fire in front of her? Try to trick her beast into... Um, her, 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 her beast attack. is just running in a panic. Just just run, 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 straight through the woods. Just just go, 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 go. And eventually it stops and it realizes, I'm out of danger. And kind of calms down and she just like comes to it like, Oh, where am I? Um, so Flavia, you come out of this, the last thing you remember, you were on the cart, now you're somewhere in the woods, in the dark, no idea where you're at, um, and you hear, um, Albina behind you, Albina, are you, what are you doing, saying, shouting? She's shouting at her, child, stop this foolishness, you don't know where you are going. Keep a hold on yourself. All right. And I think now is the time to stop. Um, everybody's going to get an experience point for tonight. Um, we are going to pick this up in two weeks. Uh, right here, right at this point, with uh, Albina rescuing Flavia from the woods. And um, um, you guys have a... Uh, captive who was just trying to feed his family by being a fucking robber. <laughs> I was just going to say, once uh, Labiana comes out of Frenzy, she's she's going to realize she's got a body in front of her and uh, is possibly going to take the opportunity to uh, replace her lost uh, pedicus <laughs> she lost a while back. Yep. He's got, he's she got eyes and feet and hands. Exactly. And Drosmos is just going to feel real uncomfortable throughout all this. <laughs> because, be because that was a time where this was him. Yep. Alright guys, one experience point for everybody. And uh, let's wrap it on up. And I will see you in two weeks. Good night. Right, good night. Bye. See you, see you guys night. then. Happy holidays Happy everyone. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, okay. For those of you guys who listen all the way through, thank you very much. We appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'll pick this thing up in January of 2022. Um, hopefully we'll see you there. Thanks and have a great evening.